If you were a slime, what sound would you make? <laughs> okay, but for those of make. us who need to spell that as an onomatopoeia, how would that be spelled? H G R R R H G R E G R G R H A G H R R G H G R G H. See, as a comic artist, Monty, immediately you defunct any sort of like ability to like just say fuck it i don't care by actually spelling it out <laughs> yeah so be that, exactly I mean, that way good on you for telling the truth but that was one of those moments where it's just like no nah, you should have just movie magic and said you lied no <laughs> i know who i am <laughs> just own it and there's records of it now too so yep so now Keep there's mind for the wiki chat. if any any right. artist draws me as a slime congratulations <laughs> and if you and if you do it wrong we'll sue you what? No, I won't sue you. Zeta will sue you specifically on my behalf. You have to have the exact lettering or, you know, <laughs> or court. Death. What? what, or what death. Okay, now, now the bigger question, chat friend, who's going to spell this all out? What font are you using? Oh. Oh, man. This is important. Oh, Kerning's geez. important in comics. Do you think I know the. I, I know Comic Sans, Papyrus. Ariel font and Ma Chinese Monty, if you Roman. use Comic Sans in a honest to god comic book, you are either doing it on purpose or a hack fraud. No, I know Comic Sans because the fucking Sans Undertale because I am a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And also because I did computers in, in school and that, those were fonts that because you Because it's too default! <laughs> The correct me, answer oh, was wingdings. I'm oh, very sorry. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god, you're so right. Uh, sorry, uh, what is wingdings? Ah, ah shoot. Uh, Trebek, uh, very sorry. <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm going to lock it. You guys want to know something really funny? I thought Trebek was was a Star star um, Star um Trek character for the longest time. Oh. So I, I know why you think that. <laughs> yes. I know yeah. exactly why you think that. I, no. <laughs> I I heard the name and everyone's just like Trebek and I'm like oh that's probably like a Star Trek character because of the name and then it was like no it's the host of a game show and I'm like what <laughs> a host of a game show on Star Trek For and they're shame, like no Monty. and I'm like oh I'm just fake sad nerd character. Canadian there there used to be a long running joke about how Alex Trebek was an eldritch horror and the only way to get rid of him was by saying his name backwards but. Then he passed away, so we can't do the joke anymore. Dang. Yeah. Car, take us away. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Unexpectables, where we learn about ancient rituals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both in game and out. Um, let's go around the horn and introduce ourselves. We're going to switch it up a little bit today. We'll start with Zito. We're going to find you. What are you up to? Twitch.tv slash Zito. Tomorrow I'll be doing commissions. Uh, I'm I, I'm going to do them as quickly as I can because your boy needs money. And the only way I know to make capital gain right now is to draw funny little cartoon characters that you asked me to do. So watch my socials on Twitter or on uh, or on Blue Sky now that we're fucking free of the curse for now. Ooh. Uh I'll be posting periodically when the slots are open. They literally close tonight, and I got work to do. But they will be reopening because I gotta, pay, I gotta pay bills, man. And then indie games happened, but that was yesterday. We'll we'll, fi we'll figure out video games later when I'm not in a dire circumstance. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, we'll, we'll just we'll just go upwards this time. Oh. Monty Glue, where can they find you? What are you up to? Hi, uh, you can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue, Blue Sky at Monty Glue, and on my YouTube at Monty Glue. Uh, apologies again for no Mass Effect. There was cat troubles in the house. Uh, however, I have a, a few announcements. Uh, one is that tomorrow is, is on the fence about whether or not we're doing Dungeon the Mad Mage. Uh, there is a chance either that Thaddeus is going to poof or that we're going to postpone. Um, additionally, Friday we'll be continuing the Hildebrand quest line in Final Fantasy XIV. Um, it is great revisiting it. I, I thought I wouldn't laugh again, <laughs> but I am laughing again, which is very nice to see. Um, 
and a special stream actually this weekend. Uh, Sunday, Draco, Hartsey, myself, and Arkov are going to be doing a double date fundraising stream to help Draco get a new car. Um, we have some great, great, uh, milestone goals, um, that is going to be really, really fun. Um, we're going to be playing a bunch of four-person games, uh, like, like Le Lethal Company and, and Stardew Valley and stuff like that. Um, one of the, I think the top goal is that if we reach, uh, cause Draco only needs like a certain amount. If we reach a certain amount, I will have to stream myself catching shiny nose passes. Oh my um, God. One <laughs> for every $200 raise. Oh when, my God. Um, if anyone knows me, I fucking hate nose pass. Are we at 30 minutes? Shit. Sorry. I hate nose pass. I don't care. I, I hate nose pass. I specifically really hate probo pass. Um, additionally, we also have, we might design our call for Fursona, which is really fun. Um, there will be hot peppers as well. Uh, and there will also be, um, I think there's gonna be a pet cam incentive as well as, uh, our call is gonna have to read off a, a copy pasta in his voice, which is very exciting. Um, so yes, if you're interested in any of that, uh, it's going to be over on Draco's channel. She'll be accepting, um, basically, stream labs stuff there. Uh, it'd be really nice to, to help them out because it's fucking... Life is fucking relentless, and I think that something nice would be good. So I want to help out my friend because this is such a two problems at once situation, completely out of their control. So I would like to help out. So if you're interested in that... If you want to see me suffer, I will also say for every two hundred dollars, it's it's a it's a nose pass I have to get. Um, so just a heads up on that. But yes, that that's that's my big announcement. <clears throat> right on. Up next, we've got Mark Allen Jr. Where can they find you? What are you up to? You can find me on Twitter and Blue Sky now that it's free and clear of all gatekeeping at Mark Allen Jr. Over on TikTok at Mark Allen Jr. VA. Here on Twitch at Aeon Protect Gaming, and you can follow my fat sleepy cat bunny on Instagram at Chonk for Life. Uh, like Zito, uh, I still have commissions open. I have music commissions open. Uh, it is my pinned comment on my Twitter. Just retweeted it on my Blue Sky as well, uh, because I have also been uh, struggling this past month. Um, so still got music commissions open. Um, by all means, please hit me up. Uh, we'll see if we can work something out. Uh, yeah, that's all I got right now. That's it. Right on. Uh, up next, we've got Gaijin Goomba go, going in the later in the half. We're gonna <laughs> all right. You. What are you up to? I'll keep this simple. Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, 7 p.m. is Central Time. Uh, the, my, my 40K slash Orcs channel has uh hard released i have a brand new video for it i've put so much love into this thing i'm very proud of it uh i i feel like uh a, a brand new person having done this i feel like i am out of a well of stagnation don't watch it now stay here but watch it later uh trust me you will love it uh i yeah uh i might be streaming i, I really just want to stream an orc game uh, this weekend, so I'll probably just be doing that. Okay, that's me. Alrighty. Up next, we've got Edward Bosco. Where can they find you? What are you up to? Uh, you can find me at Ed Bosco VA on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and right here on twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco. Right on. Uh, as for me, they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Tumblr and Blue Sky at Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, I also make some stuff for the DMs Guild. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, no, I can't announce that. Just going over <laughs> things in my head. Sorry. There's a lot of stuff going on on my end. Um... But yes, this was a, episode was brought to you in part by Die Hard Dice. Oh my god, da, I need my Die Hard Dice. Oh my god. Oh what? Oh my How god. dare! They're always oh my, here. My They're power always... scream was interrupted. Unbelievable. I'm, so, it, it I'm was. sorry. The only thing that came through was... Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> there we go. I'm like a heavy metal rocker crying out for his father. Ah. Whoa. Yeah! 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Die Hard Dice is your one-stop shop for dice and dice accessories. And if you head on over to highhardice.com, you can use the code UNEXPECTABLES to save 10% on your order. Also pick up some Lies Aspect Dice, the official collaboration between the Unexpectables and Die Hard Dice. Yeah. Do it. As well, uh, check out our merch store. We've got a bunch of designs that can basically be turned into whatever you want. Uh, it's crazy over there. We also couldn't do this week in, week out without bits and subs from viewers like you. Viewers <laughs> such as... Uh, Chehalem Froggy's mom. Thank you for the 47 months. Mikan Pachi, thank you for the 15 bits. Uh, and the additional 20 bits as well. Dr. Dank Ming PhD, thank you for the 35 months. Shade One ED, thank you for the 15 months. Mage Linzio, thank you for the 26 months. Shinichi Kid, thank you for the 9 months. Uh, Welsh 93, thank you for the 46 months. Dr. Quactopus, thank you for the 2 years of Prime Savage. Tribal Born, thank you for the five months. Mikan Pachi, thank you for the 22 months. Lycus Darkfang, thank you for the 45 months. Cory the Platypus, thank you for the 43 months of Prime. Umbertastic, thank you for the 41 months. Zenlita, thank you for the 100 bits. Tripod Centaur, thank you for the 33 months. War Drone, thank you for the 46 months. Zanuk Mizana, thank you for the 14 months. Zilban, thank you for the... 32 months of Prime Savage. Stellar Coyote, thank you for the 100 bits. Wolfwing Pup, thank you for the 25 bits. Uh, the name is Olivia, thank you for the 33 months. War Drone, thank you for gifting a tier 1 sub to Felgrun. Zombie Monster 92, thank you for gifting or thank you for the 200 bits. Ride the Rails, thank you for the 100 bits. Emerald Bandit, thank you for the 41 months. Wayside01, thank you for the 500 bits. Red Ranger 20XX, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Disco Tech Priest, thank you for the 500 bits. Z-Man Stardust, thank you for the 100 bits. Smiling KJ, thank you for the 100 bits. Skyrim Luigi, thank you for the 20 random months. Morth Randor, thank you for the 100 bits. Phil Lane, thank you for the 245 bits. Crystal Methodist, thank you for the uh, 200 oh bits. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, God. <laughs> ben Wolf, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Smiling KJ, thank you for the additional 10 bits. Shadow Flare, thank you for the 46 months. Game and Anime, thank you for the 28 months. Anarchy Amster, thank you for the 30 months. McLovin, thank you for the 29 months. Scat Flipsa, thank you for the 32 months of Prime. Awesome Link, thank you for the 27 months of Prime. Zombie Monster 01, thank you for the 25 months of Prime. Humdrum Gum, thank you for the 39 months of Prime. And Lurd Servitor, thank you for the 46 months. All right. Very good job, Connor. Thank you so much. Sorry again, we kind of started a bit Ooh. late. Uh, but thank you guys so much for your support and your love. Um, I think it goes without saying that we appreciate you guys so much. And we hope you've been enjoying the game so far. Um, and, and people on the Discord, I see you. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, with that, are you guys ready to jump back into a world of wonder like no other under the shining sun? Galvanizing! As, as long as the people gather. Ah, uh, separate but as one. They gather to cop! I'll, I'll allow that, yeah. Uh, well, if that's the case, then let's go. Sword, axe, and arrow.
So, when last we left our heroes, Kai the human wizard, Iskan the lizard folk druid, Otho the shifter rogue, Milo the Azamar cleric, and Gaius the satyr fighter, the party has concluded their long form shopping in the maritime city of Martorallo. After purchasing powerful items, dubious potions, and general goods, the party delivered missives to the various ocean lords of Martorallo. Seeing that task done, campaign one reference, Otho, Kai, and the rest of the party thought it was wise to break and enter into the Valentinius family home. After discovering a teleportation circle in their living room and their father's room in shambles with embellishing slashes and claw marks, the party was left in a state of shock. After being caught by a vigilant watch of a wizard and her guards, the party quickly sought out Oslamir Harland, one of the many ocean lords, to ask him a bunch of questions about the scene in their family home. Oslamir, hesitant, informed both the brothers that their father had been acting oddly lately and did not know what the source of this behavior was. Left in a state of concern with other revelations, the party returned to their inn for the night, taking the rest of the night for rest and reflection. You all gain the benefits of a long rest. Oh, before anything happens, uh, myself, Gaius, and Kai shall have three temp HP. You got it. Hooray. Nice. Does that also work for emotional damage? Or... Nope, sorry, it's just for the physical kind. Great. Okay. Well, that... <laughs> okay. Man, who thought I'd miss waterboarding? Uh, you guys stayed another night at the uh, the Gentle Waves, which I believe per person was five silver, if I'm recalling correctly, or am I misremembering I think that? that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we that sounds right. right. <laughs> yeah. I think we paid it at the end of last session, right? We did. I have... Okay. Yeah. I thought I'm working on um, As you guys had stayed another night, you will need to pay again. Okay. Ah, so five more silver? Uh, five more silver per person, yeah. Does anyone have change for a gold? No. I have no silver. Yeah, we're just gonna... One have... All I have is gold, <laughs> platinum, and <laughs> copper. I'm pretty sure, Mark, they're gonna have change. They can break it, yeah. <laughs> they break a platinum. I have one gold. Guy <laughs> no, just takes, a, just takes a bite out of it and spits change. <laughs> can, you, can you separate an electrum for me? Kill you. I'll separate your fucking spine from your body. Bro, that, oh! bro, that, Damn. That's, Honestly, that's a gold and a silver. Hell yeah. Monty, I'd do they do that they have brain. like a coin star machine where I can just change a platinum into some gold and silver? Uh, <laughs> no, but they have a waitress who can. Okay. <laughs> that's almost as good. Wow, that was Where's almost. The bank? I'll go I, ahead and do that. Then. I apologize. Talk amongst yourselves really fast. I just heard a noise, and there's no one upstairs. So just give me two seconds here. Okay, be safe. That's me. I hope the bears didn't break in. That's all right. Monty knows how to deal with those, right? The bears. Yeah, bears. The bears, the bears, the bears. bears. It's me. Uh, I'm looking for snacks. Uh, Chris Farley. <laughs> I'm so Are sorry. You... It's the cats. Goblin and Sprigger are playing, and they just... <laughs> Slam their cat tower up against the wall. I apologize. Amazing. Oh, no, <laughs> you're the, fine. That scared the crap out of me because my parents are in America right now, of all places, and I just heard a bang oh, upstairs, and I was like, oh. Um, I'm sorry. What? Yeah, why did they, they come here? They went to Arizona, of all places, too. Did That's they like, lose a bet? What the fuck? Yeah. Did they lose a bet? I'm I, sticking just, with this. They wanted to go to Arizona, man. I, I don't know. Probably because it's so much different than Canada, I imagine. I mean, but that's correct, but not for any nothing. good reasons. They seem to be having fun. My mom emailed me. She's like, we're having a great time. And I'm like, well, that's great. Well, anywho. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Apologies for that. You can thank good. the cats. Yeah, no, it's... Thanks, good. cat. I was ready to grab my sword and go upstairs and see what was up. <laughs> Do you have an actual <laughs> sword? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have an actual sword. Grab the door knocker as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. That All we can right. get into point blank combat with him. Uh, I'll say, Iskan, if you'd like to, if you head down. Um, Sherry is actually there, and you can see her currently holding what looks to be a paper bag, and you kind of catch her 
uh, she being the the waitress who had been serving you guys the night yes. prior. She kind of stops. She goes, "Oh, there you are. I was actually just about to head up to your rooms." Uh, I'm very sorry for the trouble, but uh, we did a lot of shopping yesterday, and so our coinage is kind of uh weird right now. Oh, that's okay. We can break it. Oh, that would be great. And he'll uh, hand her a platinum for some change. She kind of looks at it and she goes, oh, I didn't realize you guys were so rich. And not that you don't look rich. I just mean, like, this is a lot of money. Um, but I can break it for you. Oh, here. And she kind of offloads this bag to you, Iskan. Uh, oh, what's this? I noticed that you guys seemed kind of sullen when you came back the other night. I just noticed that you all kind of had this sort of grim expression, especially the, the guy with the sort of cloak thing around his neck and your friend with the glasses. They looked pretty grim. Um, so I, I went out and got you guys some breakfast. Aw. Oh. Well, you didn't have to do that. Well, I just I felt kind of bad. You guys seemed like, you know, the first night you were here, you seemed super happy. And then when you came back last night, you seemed like, I don't know, something was different. I just, you know, I just figured maybe you would sleep a while and you may miss some of the stalls that are open. It's, it's not much. It's just some fruit. Um, that I picked up, but... Well, how about this? Um, if you just give me five gold back, that should cover the rooms and, uh, a little extra for your kindness. Oh, thank you. Sure, if that's what you'd like. I'll be right back, and you watch as she walks kind of behind the counter and into the back of the kitchen, and eventually she comes back. You can hear the sound of the coin in her hand, and she walks over and just gently pours the coins into your palm. All right. Uh, thank you again. Of course. Anything else, let me know, okay? Appreciate it. And she gives, like, a, a very clumsy bow. Like, she does kind of, like, a whole, like, full bow with, her, like, her hands pressed to her hips. But then she almost topples over, but then stands back up and goes back to cleaning the counter. He'll kind of watch her for a moment, but then head back upstairs uh, and sort of... He'll knock on... Uh, Milo's door first. Ooh, hang on, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, uh, Iskan, what's what, what's up? Uh, well, I paid for the rooms, and uh, it turns out uh, Sherry kind of noticed that we were not super happy last night. Uh, she bought us breakfast. Oh, that's nice. I mean. He just hands you this bag. He hasn't even looked in it yet. All right. He just kind of looks a little half-eye closed, sleepily, big smile. I figured you might enjoy figuring out what to do with it. Well, don't you eat it? it well, yeah, but you know what I mean. Oh, that, that, uh, uh I, I, oh, oh, all right, all right, uh, uh. Yeah, just give me a minute. Go, go rouse the others. I'll, uh, I'll freshen up and be with you. And he'll kind of looking at the three doors remaining, choose to go to Gaius's door next. Okay. Gaius, you hear a rasp at your door. <laughs> door slowly creaks open. <laughs> uh, good morning. Uh, you, uh, you notice <laughs> what 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 moved from the doorway as you were uh, what what moved from the doorway as you were as it was opening wasn't a person. It was the handle to the axe, and it was used to push the door open. <laughs> uh, guys, as the door slowly opens, guys is like. Just sharpening his weaponry, just like sitting on the floor, concentrating, like reading off, reading off the runes off of his weaponry. And he like he motions his finger for you to like walk in. Sorry. Are you okay? Uh, Gaius uh stands up and shows you the gloves attached to his hands that they purchased from the store the other day, and. He mutters something in giant 
and three claws pop out from in between the knuckles. Oh. Wolverine. Uh. Cool. I'm... No, I know. I know, isn't it? I'm just trying to piece it all together. Just, it's, I'm sorry. The, the whole giant concept was only something my father ever taught me. So knowing that now that I have a third word of power attached to these gloves, it just got me thinking, what if there were other words I could find? Well, it's a whole language, right? There's so many words. Just eyes open as he looks up when, he, when you say that out loud. Well, I'm sure we'll be able to find more. Just uh, don't don't point those in my direction. Oh, right. Sorry. He mutters to it. mutters to the back of his hand, and they shink back in. What's kind of strange about that, Eastcan? You have no fucking idea how they retract, and Where they, you don't did know they how. Go? Yeah, you have no like when you watch them retract. It questions where do they go? Uh, well, I, um, anyway, uh, uh, Sherry from downstairs got us some breakfast. Uh, Milo's doing, uh, preparation with it right now if you want to head over there. Yeah, I could eat. He, like, just stands up. There's just nothing but clanging noises as all of his weaponry <laughs> falls out of his lap. Just laid bare on the floor as he just moseys over past you into Milo's room. High definition pipe sound effect. Oh, yeah, God. yeah, pipe, pipe with re <laughs> metal pipe with reverb. Uh, Eastman will just sort of sigh to himself and step out, and he's going to take a moment looking back and forth between Kai and Otho's doors, trying to decide who he wants to wake up first. And then, after a, a, a good long time of thinking about it, he's going to go ahead and knock on Kai's door. Kai, you're uh, at your door. Uh, on the first knock, you will not get a response. He will knock again. On the second knock, you still don't get a response. Uh, Kai, are you in there? Uh, yeah. Listen, uh, sorry, I'm not trying to disturb you or anything, but, uh, well, we got breakfast. I figured, uh, if you want to wake up your brother and meet us in Milo's room whenever you're ready. Uh, could you, um, could, could, could you wake him up? I still got to get ready. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh... Is he's gone? Y yeah. I'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, I'll be right there. I'll kind of breathe out and go over to Otho's door and knock on Otho's door. Uh, oh. After uh, a little while, uh, Otho will answer the door when he does open it he is without his glasses he his hair is disheveled and some of it is sort of like wet and sticking to his face he's got dark eye, dark circles under his eyes uh it's it's similar to the look that you might have seen from him early on in your knowing him waking up from a nightmare yes uh... mr seat Lally. Sorry, I hope I'm not uh, no, disturbing no. you. It was about time to wake up anyway. Um, what can I do for you? Uh, well, uh, Sherry from downstairs uh, noticed we all looked a little glum last night, and so she brought us some breakfast. Uh, Milo's getting it ready if you want to join us whenever you feel up to it. Oh, well, that's grand of her, right? Good to know that Goodwill is still alive and well. Uh, yes, I will. Uh, I'll be right down. Is um, is my brother awake? Uh, well, I think I woke him up, uh, but uh, 
Said he needed some time. I don't know if uh, you want to check on him. Maybe. Is is? Do you need anything? Is there anything I can get you or uh, help me, with? I'm I'm fine. I appreciate the sentiment, Mister Seatlolly, but I will I will be all right. He kind of looks at you for a little bit after you say that, but then he just kind of lets it go. Well, um, we'll all be in Milo's room whenever you're ready. Right, thank you. Uh, tell the others we'll be right there. Of course. And he'll head back over to Milo's room. All right. Milo, do you look inside the bag that you got? Milo? You're muted. Sorry, 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 sorry. I was, I was like, yeah, I want to look inside. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm excited. Just muted. Uh, <laughs> muted as excitement. You, as you look inside of the bag, it is Dead a. Pigeon. It is a what? Dead what? pigeon. <laughs> I'll still cook it. <laughs> Welcome to breakfast, motherfucker. <laughs> Sherry's like, I caught it in the alley. <laughs> it's mostly free of disease. It's weird. It was jingling. Oh. Um, it is not does not have a dead pigeon inside. Uh, instead, it has a rather diverse and rare selection of really nice fruits. Mm. There is a pineapple in there, a dragon fruit, uh, a couple mangoes, uh, some grapes, uh, as well as what appears to be uh, some sliced melon that has been placed inside of a small pot. Um, it is a rather it's not luxurious by any means, but it certainly is a, a very sizable and very exotic amount of fruit. You could uh, say it's an edible arrangement. Exactly, yes. <laughs> if only. A couple uh, apples is, in there as well. Is it all oh, peeled apples? and peeled no, and prepped? Or? Oh. It is not. The only thing that's peeled and prepped seems to be the, the small pot that has what appears to be some sort of green melon inside. Don't wor don't worry. I got you. Hold it back. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine, that's fine. Um all I right. see you guys head downstairs into like the main area where the tables oh, are. And I thought we were going to eat in Milo's room. That's I mean, there's not cool. room. The, the, we're yeah, not the rooms are room way too small. Yeah. All good. Yeah, I, we'll retract it, redact it, and say I told them to meet us downstairs. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try and make it as like because because you can't do too much with fruit, um, in this state. Especially since I got nothing to cook with. Uh, but I'm going to try and do it as fancy as possible with, like, diagonal slices. Like, the pineapple, I'm going to try and core that thing as best I can after ripping off the uh, the super pointy leafy top. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, 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 I'm going to try to make it, like, as fancy as, as humanly possible just to try and make the presentation nice. Let's do a cooking utensils check then, since oh, this is the, the knife and everything. I'd say probably if you're using a Why sad, your dexterity. Trend? You can use dexterity instead because you're trying to be dexterous with your knives here. Okay. Uh, can yeah. I actually use strength because I actually have a bonus in that? Sure, go for it. Okay, because I thought I used wisdom for it last time. Ah, good! Seven! This pineapple's a bitch to cut but I mean, it, is, it is a pineapple it is a pineapple who who looks at a pineapple and goes yeah i love slicing pineapple nobody nobody does what the fuck man i'll just i'll <laughs> just why you gotta get that thing strange. that little corkscrew thing yeah. yeah unfortunately that is what currently milo lacks is a corkscrew thing and instead has oh, to use man. a knife uh you do eventually get it it's it's a little crude but it works uh the easier fruits are very like the apples and whatnot are very easy to slice up for sure mm. they're a little bit more familiar to you the dragon fruit is just five question marks and you're like what on yeah earth? that's a new one i but do if, they even have it, dragon fruit in my hometown absolutely not this is a yeah, coastal only okay. fruit <laughs> um and you're just like what on earth is this thing so you just slice it in half and you're like oh okay there's stuff inside of here and then you kind of take a spoon and, and pull it out ah, um, nutrient is stored inside in, the fruit in that in that case <laughs> it, anything that i try that i like botch i want to see if i can like mash it into like a not a not a jelly but like a not a gogurt there's a thing where you take apple fruit sauce mash. yeah we'll go with that <laughs> okay, I'd say I mean, you don't really botch anything. It just doesn't look as pretty as you like. It's fruit. Right. You, you is, can't really is, mess it up that bad. Is compote the word you're looking for? I I guess I've never heard that word before. I'll be real with you. Well, compote is probably close then. Fair enough. Marmalade. <laughs> However, <laughs> on a kind of charcuterie board provided by um, 
by Sherry. You have a nice spread of, of fine fruits. A lot of pineapple, though. It's mostly pineapple. A pineapple's oh, big. <laughs> but Pineapp hey. Pineapple is amazing, but it's the only thing you're going to taste for a couple hours. That and banana. Hey, welcome to making a smoothie. Did you add banana to it? Congratulations. It's now a banana smoothie. <laughs> oh, jeez. You know... <laughs> but wait, Milo, Milo gets an idea after all this is done. You know, I wonder what would happen if I took all this fruit and mashed it all together and made it into a drink. <laughs> That's Sounds crazy. like it'd be really sweet. <laughs> oh, hey guys! Sorry, uh, I'm just wrapping up here. Um, one more thing, and I, I promise I'll be done. Um, this is strictly for flavor, Monty, but I would like to pull out the sensor and let it slowly swing back and forth to, quote, bless the food to provide the temp <laughs> HP. You got it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you smoke the fruit with your sensor. Yo, you grilled the pineapple? Oh, I feel blessed already, bro. <laughs> incense oh. baked. Yeah, incense baked fruit. <laughs> Dude, you fucking jest. Grilled pineapple. Fucks. It is. It's, yeah, it it's does. It's really good, yeah. Uh, however, assuming the brothers are awake, uh, what brothers, what are you doing? As the rest uh, of your party is gathered downstairs and are currently enjoying some some grilled pineapple and other various fruits. Otho is going to try and clean himself up a little bit. Uh, he's going to do a middling job. He's going to look a little bit, maybe just a little bit sloppier than usual. Just because he doesn't really care all that much about his appearance right now. Um... And he's going to go over to Kai's door, and he's going to do sort of a, a special knock that they've done in the past. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Man, I'd know that knock anywhere. Um, <laughs> an yeah, elf in a different plane's ears perk up for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Kai, it's me. Everybody else go downstairs? Yes, they're waiting for us. Can yeah, I speak I, uh, with you for a moment? Sure. Sure, it's unlocked. He'll open the door and close it behind him. Uh, as you open the door, uh, you will see Kai kind of sitting on the cot or whatever style bed that they happen to have. Uh, he will basically be seated with his knees up, uh, with his arms draped over them. Uh, it, as you catch his eyes, they look bloodshot like he hasn't slept much at all. Uh, he has tear streaks down the sides of his cheek. Uh, and you could see Wark at the end of the bed just kind of looking at him with a tilted head as Wark. he's just kind of sitting there. Uh, Otho will slowly walk over and uh, sit down next to him. Rough Kai night for you as well, I see. Kai will kind of make room for you. I don't know if Rough Night even begins to... start. I know. Do you... want to talk about it? It just... I'm just trying... so hard to stop this and he kind of points to his face and i just can't if i was if i was like holding you guys back or too much of a problem you would you would tell me right you are not holding us back brother i know but look i knew i know i messed up the stuff with raise your art like that was a huge mistake and i said i was sorry and I haven't always been the most useful. But, like, the one thing that I always knew... Like, I always knew Brutus was awful. Like, I knew... I just knew he was not nice. And... And now it one day... That's somehow my fault. Otho will just... Slowly wrap his arms around Kai. Listen to me. This, whatever is happening with our father, with our family, it is not your fault. Then why did he have to say it like that? 
I don't know. Maybe Harlan's way with words is slipping, but... It's pretty easy what? to say, since you've been born, your father has been fucked up. He's sort of... A, a, a flash of, like, anger, not at Kai, but just anger, will will briefly flit into Otho's eyes for a moment. The fact of the matter is that we know very little about what is happening. But I give you my word that we will find out. We will find out what's happening with our family and we will fix it. He sort of will pull away and he'll lock eyes with Kai. When I heard that I was going to have a brother, I was so excited. I finally had somebody else to share this big, bright world with. Since the moment you entered this world, I loved you. And that will never stop. You are my one and only brother, and nothing can change that. And you are important. That's why I had to find you. You're all I got left. When mom was gone, when Brutus was going crazy, it was always you. Whatever. Whenever the chips were down, it was always you. And now, now at least we have some other people that we can kind of, kind of rely on. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I suppose so. Which is nice. It's a nice change of pace. Yes. But uh, there's something you need to know. He sort of tilts his head to the side briefly. Yes. I, I, uh... It's clear now that we have very different views of Brutus, and maybe that's because of me being born or however you want to phrase it. But when I asked him to help you, when I knew something was wrong, do you know what he said to me? He pauses for a... a there, there's a very pregnant pause before he replies. What did he say? When I asked him to help you, he said... If you want to help your brother, do it yourself. That's all he said. So I know... I know you care about him. And maybe there's a part of you that wants to be him, but you are so much better than he will ever be. And as far as I'm concerned, he doesn't deserve to get to call you a son. Because you're too good for him. So if we need to fix this, then fine. If this is going to make things with Eastonville better, fine. We'll figure out what's going on. But I'm not doing it for him. I'm doing it for you. He sort of... It takes another moment, and then he nods his head. It's fine. No matter what. No matter what happens. You are always my brother. And I will always love you. I love you, Otho. I'm so grateful that you're in my life every single day. And he's going to give you a big hug. He hugs him right back. 
But I wasn't kidding with Eastcon. I do need a couple minutes to clean up. That is and then fine. I promise I'll come down. I just need to stop doing this in front of everybody. Uh. Well, let us know when you're ready. Yeah, just save me some food because I'm starving, I think. I will. At least I should be. We should eat. We should eat, definitely. I hear it's local fruit. It's better than rations. That is certainly true. Better than the sun gods cooking, at the very least, as well. <laughs> Sorry. Sneeze. <laughs> I mean, cut him some slack. He's doing the best he can. Orin? Yeah. I suppose so. It's hard to use cooking utensils with those big old paws. I like to imagine just flash cuts to the sun god holding a tiny spatula and going, oh. I can't do it. All my food burns. <laughs> it's hard to get spices up here. Oh, God. Perfect Look, patties are made with love, not magic. I don't know if there's a giant light in the sky, but... Milo's doing his best. Hmm. Well, we should all strive to do our best. I agree. I know you do. I'll meet you down there. Yeah. Thanks, Otho. Of course. And Otho will... Uh... He'll leave and he'll close the door behind him and as he he'll take a moment while he's in this sort of like hallway with all the doors. And just like slick back his hair, but in a way that he's like trying not to lose it. Like he'll he'll pause with his hands on like the back of his head, just sort of squeezing his temples. And then he'll Take a deep breath and head downstairs. Milo, Eastcan, and Gaius as Otho descends down the stairs. This fruit is amazing. Like, this is, like, incredibly fresh, the perfect ripeness. It is so sweet. But it's so, like, it's that type of sweet where you eat it and you're not, you're not like, oh, you're like, oh, it's nice. However, Otho descends down the stairs, a little messier than usual, but nonetheless still having that refined gait to him uh, as he makes his way down. Uh, Kaya, Good morning, gentlemen. He... Oh, there you two are! It's so good! As, as Gaius is about to slam down an axe on the dragon fruit. Oh, hi, how you doing? Gaius, what if I told you no weapons off the table? Yes, I'm sure you... But I'm not at the I'm... table, he's on the floor. <laughs> Rolls his eyes at you. Technically correct. <clears throat> uh, Otho, as you make your way down, Kai, do you follow eventually, or are you just going to give it uh, some more he'll, time? Yeah, he'll take a couple minutes, but then he will eventually come down. Um, he will. Are there any like? Is there running water in this place? Uh, yeah, your your bedrooms have like wash basins. It's not really running water, but it's enough that you can easily wash in it. He'll definitely clean off his face, and uh, he'll put work under his robe, grab his stuff, and then come down. Looking way better than he did before that conversation uh, and attempting his best to keep it together as he comes down. Uh, as you guys head down, kind of find your seat at the table, you can hear some noises coming from the kitchen. They're probably just cleaning. Uh, however, as you all sit down, Sherry comes out and she's like, oh, um, if you want, we have some drinks. Um, we don't really have that much, but uh, we usually save it for the nighttime. But if there's anything you'd like, we can't really oh. uncork any of the hard liquor, but we have some leftover ale um, and some water. Oh, water or juice is fine. With, actually, you know what? With all this fruit, I'll just take water. Yes, that's fine. Okay. Anyone else? Ale. We got it. I don't need to overfruit. If you have a, a light wine for breakfast, then I'll oh. take that. I'm really sorry, sir. We can't uncork the good spirits until the night time. Then I will take the water. Okay. And you? And eat it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a water. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, one Thank ale you. and four waters. You watch, she just kind of disappears behind. And she eventually comes back with a bunch of tankards, four of which contain water and one of which contains ale. 
Gaius looks at the water and then. It, Gaius looks at the water and then looks around at everyone else and looks back at his drink. <sighs> Is there something oh. the matter? Oh, jeez, am I becoming alcoholic? Well, actually, it is quite normal in some uh, parts of the world to have beer or ale or some sort of <coughs> weak alcoholic spirit in the morning. It's uh, usually due to the fact that some of the water nearby is simply not drinkable. A hundred dwarven ghosts behind Gaius are hooping and hollering right now for him. <laughs> I, will well, listen, I will the, listen the, to the hooping, hollering ghosts and guzzle down the ale. The, the ale, ale just is... jumps up and slaps Otho in the face. <laughs> Who you call it weak? <laughs> Speaking of weak, it's not weak, but it definitely has a more staler kind of taste to it. It's not like bad, but it's kind of like, you know when you have like a party and there's soda and then you drink the soda the following day and it doesn't have as much as the pizzazz. Oh, you you're, you're just basically describing I'm kicking back a Coors Light, which is fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like that. It's still pleasant, but it's like, you know, it's probably better when they open up you the, get, the You cask. get the hint of alcohol, but it's more or less you're drinking water. <laughs> yeah, more or less. And that's a that's a true fact, by the way. In yep. some parts of the world where the water yep. is not mm -hmm. safe to drink, they'll have yep. beer for breakfast instead. Yep. Because it's easier to keep beer clean. <laughs> mm -hmm. Guys just wanted to have validation from you guys that he's not being mm -hmm. a lush. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as you guys eat the fruit, uh, there's plenty to go around. Everything is really, really good. It is something about it, Otho, given your background. A waitress having such nice fruit is a little bit weird. Hmm. This is quite the delicacy. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Sherry says. She's currently cleaning the countertops. Yes, yeah, so where, where did you get this from? Oh, I got it from um, a guy called Stan. He runs a fruit mm. stand. She kind of cocks stand, her head. Stand. Well, I get it. <laughs> she kind of looks side to side and she looks towards. He kind of has a crush on me. Ah. And sometimes he's a little. Um, how do I put it? Much. Yeah, but in like a kind of sweet way. I'll show up to pick up fruit for the food for tonight he'll usually be like oh take all this it's all useless but i know she looks down at the fruit i know and she goes back to wiping the countertops hmm. reminds me of that fellow in devaria well, it can't be that bad. That's the biggest insult you I could ever give yeah, a person. for real. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, I, I, I would have did an insight on her, but I feel like now at this point, we got to do an insight on the dude. <laughs> I've never met the man, but... <laughs> I am person squarely from the from the bar. <laughs> what? Oh, I listen, I, I'm not trying to take advantage of him. I'm just saying he's got to do a bit better than just fruit. Sometimes uh, you just do the best you can, and if fruit's what he's got, fruit's what he's got. Yeah, but she kind of leans and looks wistful to the ceiling. I'm a girl who wants more than fruit. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> well, in that case, what do you want? Poetry. I want to be where the people are. <laughs> <laughs> thank Whatever you, thank song. you, <laughs> fucking thank you. Oh, I love poetry. Sonnets. Flowers are quite nice. Well, then you have to ask yourself, at what quality would it be acceptable? Mm. She keeps rubbing, she thinks about it. I don't know. Sometimes words are hard to come out, and gift given's an easy icebreaker. So, I don't know. Maybe it starts with fruit, and then it goes to poetry and flowers and all that. Mayhaps you can drop the word next to him so he gets the idea. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, I'll try that next time. She kind of gives you a little bit of a smile. Are you going to do more shopping today? I think we are quite done with shopping for the time oh, being. That's that's good. Um, If you need anything else from us or you intend to stay the following night, let us know. We'll be here. Yes, I have a feeling we'll be staying in Motorola for at least a few more days. Well, I'm glad to say that the... Gentle Waves is always open to such fine travelers. Yeah. Though I can't promise there'll be fruit every morning. Of course. Well, that's fine. 
I look at the, I look at the rind of the pineapple. You get lucky, punk. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of like... nods and heads off into the back to leave you guys with your own conversation, providing you some privacy. <sighs> well, I suppose there's nothing left to do about our official business here except wait. So, guys, you want to go to that fight pit thing? Guys, with all of his weapons strapped to him, I'd like to. I don't <laughs> I think guess. they're gonna. I don't <laughs> think they're gonna allow you to take all that. Yeah, I guess really, what, I don't know what they'd allow. Would oh. we know anything about the? Uh. Oh fight wait a minute, Martorello Fight Club. Uh. Oh, you don't talk about that. Wait, wait a second. Does Anybody have? I hate to ask this question. Does anybody have the criminal or urchin background? I don't think anyone does. <laughs> nope, nope, no. Nope. However, I did just remember. Uh, did did the guy say it would take a day to get my stuff silvered? Uh, let me grab that. Yeah, he never he never gave me a deadline. He just said it would take some time. Uh, where is Fergus? Where are you, my delightful guinea pig man who loves his guinea pigs? What? He's gonna spend... uh, all right. Uh, are that's there Tristellan gonna... pigs, actually? Yeah, Tristellan pigs. Thank you. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Yeah, I didn't write uh, down. Uh, actually, they should be ready to go now. If you all don't mind. Oh, go ahead. It's it's uh, 16 hours he would need. Technically, actually, no. He only works... Yeah, he needs another day, actually. Oh, so, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, it'll be today and then tomorrow, and then you can pick it up. Well, if nothing else, I would like to at least see the fight pit today, okay. and then by the by the morrow, my, my weapons my father made me should be ready. All right, easy enough. Um... Otho and Kai, roll me a history check. Oh boy. Do, 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 do. do Let's do. see. Are you playing Happy Wheels? 18. Nice. Okay. Uh, soft well, Smart. All right. Otho and Kai. <laughs> um, Darkport and. Bu, 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 bu. Grab my notes here. Sorry, give me two seconds. One. I'll kill you. Uh, Dusk Landing and Dark Port are kind of like, you know, when Mufasa says to Simba, that shadowy place over there, we don't go there. Yeah. Um, your father was very much like that. He was like, don't go there. Um, <laughs> what you know of. Dusk Landing and Darkport is that it's kind of where the quote-unquote unsavory congregate. It's not necessarily like a it's not necessarily like a place where you're going to get stabbed the moment you enter. It's kind of like where the poor populace reside. Um, and there are certain things, you know, like, like Coleco has very little power there and so he holds a lot of resentment against that place. Uh, most Ocean Lords have little to no power there whatsoever, but they for some reason, allow it to persist. Um, it's pretty well known for its unregistered businesses, um, <coughs> as well as its small shrines to various gods not under the sort of allowed pantheon in Martorello. Um It's also a place where pirates and other um, individuals congregate. Uh, congregate. Congregate. Whatever. Congregate. 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 I speak English. I'm fluent. Did you know that? I didn't. No. I thought you spoke Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> Bagel. Bagel. <laughs> uh, listen, I've read the YouTube comments, Monty. I think that's a you thing. Whatever. Um, there's a lot of trade there that occurs um, that has to do with you know pirating, smuggling, things like that. But there's other business there as well. It's not exclusively criminal, but it's like that is the place you go to do criminal activity. A Otho fight just... pit there makes a lot of sense because that sort of thing would probably be shut down very quick in the main city. Um, but clearly in this sort of environment probably thrives quite well. That's where you go to do crime. Otho just takes his, his mug of water and just goes... Darkport <laughs> <laughs> uh, is the... Uh...
what would we would colloquially refer to as the bad part of town. Myla shrinks down a little bit. We no, were... it's, it's fine. There's just there's a lot of gambling and cards and uh, the fight pit and it's just it's stuff that the upper echelon doesn't really like, so they kind of shelter it away in the shadows. But it's honestly not that bad of a place. I would sneak out there all the time. What? <laughs> oh, you didn't know you were asleep. <laughs> we're learning so like much stunned. today. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, in that case, Hi, if you've snuck out, uh, yeah, like, a lot of gambling, a lot of drinking, a mm -hmm. lot of other things. Um, but surprisingly good vibes in a weird kind of like criminal way. <laughs> oh, oh, the, you remember when we had to like buy all those books when I tried to go to school? That was where do you think I got the money? Oh, if it was like it's like like trying to choke down the water that he's currently choking on. <laughs> this isn't strong enough. There are there are legitimate uh, businesses there though. I'm not looking to do any cri anything criminal. I just want to. I would hope not. No, I. Well, I just. I've read so many books about gladiatorial bouts that I just thought that this would be fun. Well, the fight pit, I. I think is. Officially sanctioned. I'm not sure. I've never been there. Book Sakai. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, the fight pit's pretty cool. Uh, Monty, just as a, because I'm sure Kai would have seen a fight or two. Do they, is it just he's like weapons? No, you, you would have never been. No, but I mean, he's probably heard of like fights taking place there. Would it have yes. been like hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons or is there magical fights? Are there tears? Like you how do they don't normally... know. I will say this, even though you did sneak out, that is like in the heart of it, and you would know better than to go there, especially Got it. given your association with Brutus. As a mm -hmm. young, younger, you know, by yourself, probably you would probably mm -hmm. not go. Um, but you've heard that the fight pit is called the Thresher Pits. Okay. The I mean, they, don't, they don't have Maz there. Do they? There's no Maz there, right? You last I check, no. I'm. Mean, we're gonna have to find it. There's a lot of flat land. We'll have to warn Monty. But there's other an Eldritch Horror in there somewhere. Leave me alone, man. I knew what I was doing when I named it that, but that is what it is called. <laughs> the Thresher Pit. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, so maybe there's. Yeah. Your father specifically, like, very it seemed very. How do I describe it? Father expressly forbade. <laughs> If I mean, I kind of, you. yeah, <laughs> legitimately, like, and and the way he wasn't he wasn't forbidding you in a sort of like you know the way you would really think like if you were gonna like stick a fork in an outlet he'd be like don't do that but like this felt very <laughs> it Bobby felt Harris. like a warning that was very personal I suppose like there was some other layer to his warning that you couldn't quite read that he was like don't go there Otho will like click his tongue. Well, I suppose that makes a lot of sense now, doesn't it? Uh, but yeah, if you're looking for the, the Thresher Pit, which is what it's called, it's basically in the heart of the area. It's, uh, I guess intense is the word. You're not going to want to pull a lot of attention to yourself, and Otho and I are definitely going to have to keep our heads down. We should probably not bring all of our money there. Yeah, that's also probably smart. So, do we want to get rooms now? Also, probably smart, just so we have a place to leave things. Yes. I <laughs> guess I'll go do that then. Otho gets like a Otho gets like a far off look in his eyes, just like I'm really about to go to the place Otho. I was forbidden to go to. Yoo -hoo! Bye. Otho. Uh, yes, yes. You're doing the thing where you stare off at the wall. Well, it's dark port. Well, if it makes yeah, you feel any better, you, you don't really have, have you, to. Have you really never been to dark port, like, at all? No! I... <laughs> what? What did you do for fun? I went to the courts. I hung out in high society. Ah, yes! 
Hello, my name is Otho Valentinius, and I'm here to do the court thing. It's That's so... what I sound like, yes, but... <laughs> That's a good impression, actually. I, I know, it's like I grew up around it. Holy shit, there's two of you. I... Whoa! Oh, uh, so it's going to be fine. If, Besides, if make... now that we know Brutus was a criminal, we're just following in his footsteps. He <laughs> just like... <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh, God! Well, if it makes you feel any better, you don't have to follow me. This is just something I wanted to do. I think we you should, should go as a group. Go. Oh, no, yeah. I yeah, we're no, definitely, no, we're definitely no, going as a group. No, no, we are not above, splitting the party no, in no, the don't guys, go to the Badlands place. Guys, above game... Zito is not telling you to separate the party. Gaius, on the other hand, doesn't fucking understand or know anything. <laughs> yeah, we, we know. <clears throat> In character, he's like... O Otho's like, I really think if any of us are going to Darkport, we should all go, just for safety's sake. I don't want to get mailed one of your horns suddenly. <laughs> I, I, I would agree you with this. got the sentiment. goat. We got <laughs> yeah. like, literally know. and figuratively. I don't know if I want to go with you to this place. <laughs> I'll go because we're all friends and we look out for each other, but I'm not gonna like Guys, it. Guys, it's gonna be fine, and Gaius is probably gonna win a lot of money. I'm not there for money, honestly. You're gonna win a lot of fights. Okay, I like that. I mean, if there's there we go. Now, there's monetary value in it, sure. I just want to see if all the trading I've been doing has honed into anything. Right? That's, see? I I don't think you all seem to remember what I've told you when we first met. He, like, holds up his great axe. This is work. And then he, like, puts it back down and then holds up his two fists. This is fun. So, technically speaking, are you saying it's not fun to swing the great axe? Or is it just the fists are more fun? Or is it like an analogy that I'm missing? Or Oh, it's that I, I much rather prefer combative sport than actually harming anyone. Ah. It's, it's, I don't know if you've noticed. I, I know, I'm shocker, I know. He like waves his hand in front of his face. You can't tell with this poker face that I have, but... I don't enjoy ending a life. I'd much rather have fun showing off martial prowess than just killing a person. If we were ever in a situation that allowed for subduing, which unfortunately not a lot of times we have been, kind of eats away a little bit. But I know that it's either us or them. And I'd much rather see my allies survive than be held on a crutch of some high and mighty vow of believing that what I'm doing is the right thing when really I'm just trying to save our lives. So that's the whole reason why I want to go to the fight pit in the first place, because for the first time ever, I'd like to at least be in a combat situation where it's for fun and not some end of the world scenario or fighting the undead or whatnot. Well, I suppose the Thrasher Pit would be the place to do that. Guy's gonna elbow Otho and just give him a smirk. Uh, East he looks defeated. <laughs> <laughs> Kai's just gonna lean into him. Democracy. Uh, East get it takes a while because uh, Sherry probably. Definitely was out of earshot, but she eventually working. returned. Yeah, and she's like, oh, sorry, did you need something? Uh, yeah, we were just gonna go ahead and get rooms for the next night. Okay, I can do that. And she watches, she pulls out a ledger, and she begins to write down. Did you want to use the money you, you gave me earlier? Do you want to Oh, no, that's you? fine, and he'll give her three more gold to cover the rooms for Thank the you. evening. She takes the gold, and she places it inside of, like, a sort of pouch, notes it down, and she nods. Uh, how much money are you guys leaving? <laughs> I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna five. leave. Uh... <laughs> Just enough to hire two more of them. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's gonna leave sweet. everything but my gold. Oberth and Gherkin, two! two. I will uh, say this, you would know, just from your history, that there is usually betting on the table. 
Um, betting is a big thing in Darkport. So I will cool. take money to be able to bet, but I will not take all of my money so that I will be yeah, I'm, a, a prime target. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking like a platinum and five gold. Yeah, Platinum and uh, five gold, you got it. I have all of 22 gold, so I'm just taking it with me. Okay. Yeah. I, I am leaving 60 platinum. And, and also, I'm going to... Everyone put your shit in the chest, because I'm just going to yes. leave that here. I, I am leaving everything monetarily that isn't gold, so I will be taking does, my gold with me. Does the chest have a lock? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you picked it, remember? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, remember that time uh, you did that illegal thing? The, listen. Lock yeah, <laughs> listen. Listen here, you little shit. <laughs> Locksmithing is a fine profession. Some people get locked out of their houses sometimes, and they need a locksmith to come and pick their lock. It's a perfectly, mm, yes, tell me perfectly more. legal profession. That's mm -hmm. funny. Just break in through the window. Tell me more. Got tell me more. See, this is why I like living in the forest. We had trees. We just, like, sat on the branches. It was fine. Sounds... Flash cut to Gaius sitting on a branch. Moment pauses. Gotta say, this is pretty great. And it just flash cuts back. <laughs> <to the cabin>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will leave all of my platinum and 200 gold. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave. I'll take everything else. I'm going to leave all of my, like, gear and shit except for, like, the great sword and whatever equipment I have on. You got it. I'm just going to put this in character discussion, just how much gold I'm leaving behind. Yeah. Maybe leave a note of that just so you know. I wrote it in That's my fine. notes, but I will put it in character. I'm yeah. only taking the carrot. I hope you're all happy. I'm the broke one now. Well, you are not I broke mean, with 22 gold. You spent your money you on a very good investment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you did you, spend 4,000 gold. Yeah, I, I, only, I, only, I only have this radiant ICBM. It's no big deal or anything. <laughs> Listen. Uh, you guys, it's like, I'm only fine. Wolverine now. Like, yeah. come on. <laughs> I gotta tell you guys. <laughs> uh, I mean, to be fair, with Second Wind and Milo's thing, you do have regenerative capabilities, so... I, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you say that! I also have the fucking mountain on my, the you back do. of my hands. Correct. <laughs> Are you saying that you're chopping down the edge of a mountain? Well, the, all I'm the... saying is, is I'm fire, stone, and a mountain, so I'm essentially a volcano. Oh. Well, if you ever do stand next to a mountain and chop it down with the edge of your hand, I think it would make a great song. Yes, it would. Alrighty. With your money stowed away, your gear on you, I imagine you guys head out. At this point in the day, it's like midday. Uh, you guys kind of woke up late and probably, I imagine, took some time to relax in the morning after such an arduous day prior. Mm -hmm. uh, but probably. as you step outside, it's, it's slightly cloudy today, kind of that old maritime overcast. Uh, but the seagulls are flying through the air. People seem to be mulling about a little slower than normal. When it's warmer, people seem to run around, but when it's overcast, it tends to slow things down a little bit with that bit of that sort of ocean chill. Uh, however, uh, I would say because the only person who's ever been there was Kai, I need a survival check for you to figure out how on earth to get to Darkport. From Back. Kai? From Kai, yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, I will... His... Sorry. Otho is using his cloak of many fashions to make just the most nondescript... Uh, cloak and cowl and just pull it up over his head. If I may, I will guidance. You got it. Uh, I would love that. That'd be great. Ho! Oh, I'm gonna Roll guidance it. it too. Let's go. It's a d4. That's gonna be an 18. 18, okay. You have a general idea of location uh, and the sort of boundary between dark port and uh martyrolo is very stark uh there is the sort of very nice blue top homes that eventually just like have a bit of a makeshift wall made out of driftwood and other bits of ship eventually just making way to small uh sort of like how do i describe it small crude cobbled together ramshackle bungalow bungalows basically um and as you guys eventually kind of pass through a essentially a gate um you notice that the guards that you're used to like the land guard has been replaced with a sort of militia guard um specifically individuals of uh very 
like scarred up faces wearing very crude looking armor but nonetheless presenting themselves in a very intimidating way Otho's going to pull his hood up over his head and try to just hide himself as much as possible uh, as you make your way inside, though, what surprises you is that there's actually quite a few quaint businesses here, but it's a little jarring. You see, like, Grandma's Fresh Cookies, and then next to it is X Your X, Poisons and Other Curses, like, next door. Um, is there a tax definitely... place? <laughs> there is a loan place, yeah. Gold <laughs> loans. And, you and almost said shark, like didn't you? I, I almost did, yeah. <laughs> oh, is, there, is, there like, is there like a wear shark that gives out loans? Oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> that would so, actually be legit pretty cool. I, that would be sick seeing a, uh, a triton like shark dude. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're that land shark, aren't you? No. No. Just goes in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, however, what, what immediately kind of throws you guys off the most is there's a lot of kids, like, just playing in the streets, like, playing with, like, sort of bits of cloth, uh, that they're using to kind of play makeshift tag and kind of running through the streets with dogs and stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of surprising life here. Monty. Um, this, yep. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I, I was just going to ask, um, are there, like, older folks sitting out on chairs watching the area, or are the kids just sort of playing freely? The kids seem to be playing freely. You don't know if there's anyone watching them. It's kind of hard to tell. There's a lot of, like, I don't want to describe it. Like, because everything's ramshackled, nothing is really, like, sequentially ordered. There are plenty of places where you, like, walk past someone without even really knowing it. Because okay. there's just kind of all these little nooks and crannies. <laughs> but the kids just... are in like packs or five or ten. Like they're in these large groups and they're kind of running around. So I just had to ask because you know you're safe if there are old folks in, in rocking chairs watching the kids. Yeah, but the <laughs> fact that there's not means you're in the wrong know, part of town. It's, <laughs> it's, little, it's still there up are, in the air. There are some older people. You notice as you walk past these two older drow actually. Like these really old drow guys playing a game of what looks to be some sort of like strange board game you've never seen before. And they clearly are getting really into it because one of the old drow men kind of starts shouting at the other one. And then you hear them kind of going back and forth and under common. Um, you also they're like, notice. Hmm? They're like noticeably old drow. Very wizened looking. Yeah. Damn, they've got to be quite old then. They're, yeah, they look they're quite old. Yeah, they're a couple of thousand years old. Uh, not that far. <laughs> Probably but, not that old. <laughs> no. like, you know, approaching like five hundred, maybe. Probably 500, 400, 500, Yeah. Um, what's really interesting though is that eventually, as you kind of walk down a very crude, very surprisingly like it's not Gus Brun Tipper Bottom levels of infrastructure, but like there is a proper road in the middle of this sort of street but eventually it gives way to just water and planks of wood as you've entered like docks proper and as you kind of walk it's kind of like walking a bunch of like sort of catwalks above the water of these like kind of rotting logs or points where you have to like jump across and you notice that they're sort of like gondolas now like people tend to travel by these long wooden gondola like ships uh, between these sort of stilted houses where you see people kind of pulling up fish traps and they seem to be kind of like, you know, taking out the fish and kind of, you see like a woman who has got heavy babushka energy and she kind of gives you an, like a glance. <laughs> that is kind a of all. <laughs> oh yeah. Like... Are we just going to gloss over that description? That's fantastic. Heavy babushka. Heavy Damn. babushka. Oh yeah. yeah. More like... gateway references? Can't I'm believe it. Sorry, I don't. <laughs> this is what happens yeah. when don't it comes back, Connor. Word. All of the good stealable. <laughs> All of the good stealable content from Saturdays is back. You don't own the word babushka, Connor. <laughs> but he was the first to use it on this channel, maybe. Um, however, you reach a bit of a standstill, as it seems like the only way forward is a boat. You guys ready? Oh, great. We're going to be landlocked as well. As I'll ever be. Uh, Kai's going to approach. All right, you approach the docks. You see currently a uh, older, thin human woman, very, very tan skin, 
uh, hair kind of frazzled out, but she's wearing a very wide brim, like Luffy one piece hat. Um, and as she kind of acknowledges you, as she stands up, you notice her arms are just built. Like this is a built woman. Like she's thin, but her arms are like Popeye. Like she's got these thick, muscular arms. Also, I am echoing through someone's microphone, so please. Just check it might be mics. me. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but she kind of waves you down, and she looks at you. And goes, "You need to be ferried somewhere." Uh, yeah, actually, we do. Very well. Get aboard. Guys, immediately hopping on and going to the front of the boat, Captain Morgan style. It is a very crude boat. It is clearly built together from like carved out driftwood, mm -hmm. um, but it 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 keeps. It's a little it's a little shaky on side to side, mm -hmm. um, but as all of you kind of fill in, uh, she just immediately kind of takes off, uh, and as you kind of make your way with her. She does two things with her stick. She pushes the boat and she swats at seagulls that continuously land on the boat and kind of call at you. Divine. Divine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, Steven, come back. <laughs> Steven. No, bitch. Bitch. You know, you know. If you don't know, you need to get educated. Watch Feeding Steven. It is my favorite internet video start, series Start ever. from the beginning. Yeah, yeah Feeding Steven is great. It's very good. I guess I'm uneducated. Sorry. It's very uh, delightful. Educate Otho, yourself. Otho, as as the boat takes off and you guys, are, I assume the water's not very deep. It's just this is the it, best way to cross it's, it. It's impossible to tell because it is so murky. There Got are it. several boats kind of making up this sort of channel. Some of them are just mobile shops too. Some of them are just selling like fruits or fishes, anything like that. It seems like as you kind of are being pushed around, this is like kind of the food market. Uh, it seems to be mostly on these boats. The water itself is kind of murky and muddy. You can't really see the bottom, but you do notice that there are some kids like swimming in it, which probably isn't the most sanitary, but they are mm. swimming in it to get from place to place. Don't swim in flood waters, kids. Those Otho, kids you'll notice that dysentery. since... <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you'll notice that since the talk of going to uh, Darkport and getting here, <laughs> Kai's mood has almost flipped on its head, and you'll actually see him at the front of the boat, uh, and you'll hear him singing, what do we do with a drunken sailor? What will we do with a drunken sailor? What will we do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? And as they're going down the river. The uh, old woman who's kind of pushing the gondola kind of smiles at that. Uh, she's got really strong aunt energy if i if i had to describe mm -hmm. her her vibes um as you kind of pass you see that there's like places of business that are just made up and like people are getting on and off of gondolas there's a bar just an open air bar on a stilted house that currently is like serving drinks uh you see like a bunch of other butcher shops with hanging meats it's such a health code violation it's insane but it's, it's thriving um, eventually, though, the gondola driver goes, So, where are you heading? Where do you need to go? Oh, uh, uh we're going to the, uh, Thresher Pit. Thresher Pits, very well. And you watch, she quickly turns the boat and begins her way down another channel. Mm -hmm. And I would say anyone with a keen eye, which is most of you, would notice a large, almost dome-shaped wooden building growing over the horizon amongst oh. all the other buildings. Nice. Eventually, you guys come to another dock where she ties up her vessel, um, and she kind of points out the large dome, and she goes, if you're going to the Thresher Pits, that's the way you need to go. Why, thank you, ma'am. Of course. And she gets back into her boat. Appreciate it. Way up the rise, way up You watch her kind of kick off, and another seagull lands on her boat. She's like, get out of here. She kind of swats at it, and it, like, <laughs> flies away. You know, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I will say this. God, there's a lot of seagulls here, and they seem to be having a great time. You know what? I'm okay if there's just, like, one chilling out on one of Gaius' hordes. You know, Collie, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that you're actually far more comfortable here than anywhere else. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. <laughs> Otho is the exact opposite. <laughs> It's worth he's pointing like got out. his head down. He's trying to make himself look small. 
as you guys kind of continue towards the larger building, uh, you do notice like a guy buying a fish from a stall. And then as he's walking, like it's like boss music's playing as he's fighting off all the seagulls with a stick. You notice that <laughs> oh. everyone here kind of has like a stick or some sort of like bludgeoning thing at their side. And you're like, at first you're like, oh, that's probably for crimes. And they're like, oh no, it's for the, it's for the seagulls because they're <laughs> relentless. <laughs> Um, <laughs> however as you kind of make your way closer and closer at this point the dusk is kind of falling like traveling through dark port takes a long time it is it's almost its own city um and it's quite the mixed bag of individuals as you make your way through it seems to be a lot more populated around the inner kind of sanctum area um i mean you see you know humans you see scarred up looking humans you see actually some elves wearing dark cloaks um, you also see, uh, you know, a few Kenku, um, a few black kobolds as well, uh, as well as some blue kobolds. Uh, you also see a few dragonborn here and there. They're a little bit more rare. Um, and you also notice, you know, drow, uh, durgar, uh, some deep gnomes as well. Um, and interestingly enough, you also see some rather strange looking creatures humanoid-esque but they're like very small like elf life like elf like kind of like a halfling or an elf with like digigrade sort of like segmented legs like uh some sort of like a wolf or something that come down to these like weird claws and they're quite small uh, and they wear kind of these dark cloaks and kind of sneer at you as you kind of pass um, these are you, these are different from the wear jackals that we saw, or the jackal. Oh that yeah, we saw? Okay. these things are, are are much different. They've never seen anything like them before. Um, you also notice that there are way more of those guards, and you notice that their kind of telltale sign of these guards is that they wear black, like steel armor, um, which mm -hmm. just has a rather terrifying look to it, with lots of spikes and things, very intimidating. Um, and they kind of acknowledge you as you pass, like just not really like calling out to you, but like their eyes trail you as you walk past, just kind of taking note of your group walking past. Yeah, yeah. Um, you guys have some money on you, right? Mm -hmm. Some money, yes. yes. Yeah, we got um, some money. We 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 left most of it back at the hotel or the okay. inn, rather. Kind of pass by. There's a dwarf kind of smoking on a pipe. Kind of watches you as he goes. You notice his eye is missing. Um, and then eventually you begin to hear a lot of noise. Uh, there seems to be quite a gathering around this large dome-like building, which as you get closer now, the size of it begins to like really, really kind of like hit you. This is a very large building. Um, it's not like Staples Center large, but it is, is larger than like probably all of the Ocean Lords like real estate put together. <clears throat> Or like three or four ships like stacked up on one of each other wide. It's it's very large. And there seems to be quite a gathering of a bunch of characters kind of making their way around. You know what are <clears throat> I have to say, if this is what your bad parts of town look like, Martorallo really is doing well. I mean, I would never have considered this like a bad part of town it's just not the well i mean you saw where we were yeah i thought that was going to be the majority of the city i wasn't expecting a whole nother city underneath uh i'm yeah, gonna well, move towards the crowd likewise all right as you move towards Hands the crowd purses people as you kind of move into the crowd, you see that there is quite an eclectic mass. You also do notice that there are some people who are essentially like, quote unquote, cutting the line. Uh, Otho, one of the things that stands out to you is a small entourage of a man and a woman uh, and sort of followed by like four or five cloaked figures who look just absolutely gorgeous um, and are wearing like very nice finery for such an establishment. Um, however, they are quickly escorted inside. Uh, as you guys kind of make your way closer, uh, you see kind of currently bouncing or, or holding the door as you slowly approach and creep in uh, a just absolutely like a, a slab of beef minotaur 
a, a black minotaur with sort of like brown accents on the nose and the horns, these sort of piercing red eyes kind of puts up a hand to stop you all and kind of looks you over and goes, what are your intentions inside of the Thresher Pits? I'd like to compete. Competing. You will want to head down to the left, down a set of stairs. You will want to speak with a half-orc. He'll help you. Very well, thank you. He opens the door for you and lets you inside. Hell yeah, brother. Let me get in there. Behind Gaius. As you all head inside, it is like, oh my gosh, it smells like blood, sweat, smoke, incense, spilt ale, like all sorts of cocktail of smells. By themselves would be horrible, but somehow the sort of smokiness and the mixture of everything feels weirdly good. Like it kind of makes sense. The inside is a massive complex, multi-tiered, about three tiers high. You see people gambling, people schmoozing. Um, there's drinks to be had. There's a fight breaking out a couple tables over. There are card games being played. Uh, Otha, you notice that sort of very well-dressed couple currently discussing, and you notice that their fangs are a bit longer than the average person. Would I be by, able by to noting ident- that they are fangs? <laughs> would I be able to identify what that would indicate about religion. them? I mean, religion check. Religion hmm. would Otho yeah. be the only one who notices this? Um, I'd say the rest of you definitely could. I feel like it stands out to Otho just because of their their dress, but well, let's see what he does. Uh, that's a fourteen. 14. Oh, those are vampires. Uh oh. Oh. A combination of feelings uh, washes over <laughs> Otho. First of all, when when the smell hits, he's like visibly stunned for a second. Like he has to lean up against the wall and like catch his breath as soon as a probably pretty familiar smell uh, re-enters his nostrils. Um, Then he sees the vampires and he just like pulls the hood over his head even harder and like uh, ushers like with his hands for the group to continue moving on. Uh, Could I look over the vampires and just... I want to get a feel for them, but I'm not sure what sort of role that would be. Can I roll like an insight, insight I guess? Yeah, that would be a, that'd be an insight for you. Yeah. Just a general insight on what sort of shenanigans. Come on, that baby. Is a 16. 16. They appear to be honored guests, and they seem to be like very cordial. Uh, there's a couple of individuals who you, now you realize are like waiters or like servants who kind of come over and immediately take the vampire's jacket and his his lady's sort of shawl. There's two of the vampires, you realize both of them seem to be a couple. Um, however, the group behind them in the in the sort of um, cloaks appear to be actual, like, vampire spawn, like they're thralls. Um, but they oh, seem to be... Oh, so in... those, the, the two are, like, vampire vampires. Vampire vampires, yes. Great. However, they seem to be incredibly cordial and are showing a great level of decorum and grace. Um, and there's even some people who kind of note them and seem to recognize them. The sense of the energy you get from them is that they're very comfortable in this space and that the people around them are not as unnerved as you are. Um, would I know anything about vampires' capabilities? Uh, that would be a religion check, which I believe was at 14. I rolled the, I rolled the 14. Um, you know that they are ancient, uh, you know that they have, they're undead, specifically. Um, you know that they don't like sunlight, <laughs> they can't enter buildings without being invited, which when you remember outside, they're like, oh, they were invited in, oh Yeah, just like me, for real, for real. <laughs> Um, whatever surface knowledge you have about vampires is probably what you would know about these vampires. Like, okay. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, did you know I was in Vampire Mythcary? 
Oh god. <laughs> you also notice some uh, Sahagin kind of hanging about as well. Um, they seem to be kind of also bouncers or other individuals um, who kind of seem to be running the place. Uh, you also notice that uh, oh god my brain just stopped working. I'm so sorry. Uh, you also notice the biggest thing, and Gaius, this definitely stands out to you specifically. Um, oh. The giant arena is this is this very large dome in the center. Um, it has a sort of stone flooring to it. And it kind of, like, there's a sort of, like, chain and steel dome that kind of runs around it, probably to keep whatever is happening inside. Uh, and you also notice that the top of it has this giant circular, like, disc set right up into the top, which seems to have a bunch of, like, different hatches and, like, holes where they can probably open and close it. Um, but otherwise, it is a rather large, very huge coliseum. Um, notably, as you kind of look inside, you can see there's a bunch of, like, um, essentially workers just cleaning it out at the moment. They're kind of sweeping out some stuff. Oh, dude, it's not even hiding. Gaius' tail is wagging as he's looking looking inside the dome. Uh, you also notice as you pass by some gnolls uh, as well, currently kind of talking amongst themselves at a table. Um, you also notice quite a few individuals who I would say uh, Iskan and maybe even Milo would recognize as specifically monster hunters. Just oh, based boy. on their garb and their dress. Like, they're, you know, you've had hunters that kind of hunt specifically monstrosities. They are built with weapons that make them capable of capturing and, and killing monsters specifically, and they have a very grizzled look to them as well. People oh. of every walker here, I guess. Every walk. Actually, I can't think of a time I've seen this many people. How did they fit this many people in here? Gaius, Gaius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get you signed up. Where's that person they said to look for? Oh, the half orc over by the stairwell. Yeah. I head over. Oof. All right. Kai's following step, step in, step in, step in, step. step, in, step All right. Step, as step. you head down the stairs, uh, you begin to see it kind of opens <laughs> up into like a large, like under part of this arena. You're definitely underground now. Um, there's notably some leaks in the wall, probably just because you're below sea level. But you can currently see an employee like trying to spackle it, like trying to keep it not from <laughs> breaking. Plug, plugs it with his finger. <laughs> Call help. You can also hear the far off roars and screams of beasts down below here, uh, sequestered off with curtains. Um, however, you currently see holding a clipboard uh, a sort of comb over Homer Simpson style hair, uh, older half orc currently wearing decently okay clothes workers clothes uh currently jotting down some information as you see another sort of group of adventurers currently uh, applying uh probably to fight in the pit themselves and he kind of talks to them and they kind of head off and kind of give you all a bit of a look as they continue on and you approach him yeah i sure absolutely. do absolutely arch <laughs> I'm sorry. No. You, said you, you said it. You said it. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Hello. Uh, how can I help you? I'm looking to sign up. Uh, what? Are you a beast or are you venture? Oh, he looks at himself. Oh, adventure. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm not down as five. Um, have you Wait, been what? Oh. Wait. Are... Oh, uh, they were merely going to spectate. I was the one who wanted to fight, unless... Oh, looks could... to the rest of them. I, I mean... Is it like a group event? Or... Yeah. yeah you fight as teams. Oh. Uh, Milo goes freaking white. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Kai's gonna turn around. We're in! What? what, what? We're in! You want to do the fight pit? We're in. Well, um, maybe I should scratch the orc scratches and that and goes, um, I'll explain the rules first, maybe, if it's your first yes, time. Yes, that way, that way we know how to properly not cheat. You seem I, extremely eager. That's good. That's good, though. Um, 
I mean, there's no real cheating to be done. You can't teleport outside the arena. That's against the mm -hmm. rules. Uh, okay, you can't target simple. anything outside the arena because that okay. could cause harm to the people in there. That's good to know. Um, okay. It's to the death. So it's a fight pit to the death. Uh, uh, um, uh, you'll be question, fight question. Uh, yeah. if, if, we, if we incapacitate the opponents to the point where they can no longer compete, will they call the duel? Oh, you'll be fighting beasties. You're going to want them, you know? Ah, I see. Yeah. I mean, so, unless you want to be put in as monsters, in that case, you'll fight other people and have to, you know, them. But if you're, if you're coming in as ventures, you just, you could be fighting a bunch of beasties that the king uh, is getting for the competition. Gaius, I know you said you don't like doing that. It's kind of your call. Hey, sorry, did you say the king? Yeah. Which king? He kind of, the dork is like perplexed, look towards you, he goes, the king of Moderato, King Jackson. He's kind of looks towards word. Otho and Kai. And, and Kai. Uh, no, you have not heard of this. Um, so, sorry, I'm not familiar with King Jackson. Uh, are, are they here? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're here every night. They host. Uh, okay. Is King like a, is that like their first are they like King Jackson like their their first like like I call him Gaius their name is King. You can see the arcs getting actually kind of offended and he goes, "He's a king, King Jackson." You'll have to forgive ah. us. We're abs we're incredibly new here. Yeah, we're not we're not from around here. I'm noticing. Um, do you know there's yeah. a there's a gold reward for completion? Which is what? Uh, well, here's the thing. Um. You have three circuits you could choose from as a group of five. You have the easy circuit, the moderate circuit, and the extreme circuit. Um, easy is usually just if you have some combat experience, it should be relatively good to go, but you earn a little bit less money as there's less risk, which means there's less thrill for the watchers up there. Uh, moderate is good if you have a lot of experience fighting. You get more money. Um, and high risk, extreme is very high risk, but you get paid almost double um, but usually one or two people usually die. What do they pit you against in moderate? Uh, moderate, we got some rather vicious beasties. Um, let me see here. Um, you're looking at fighting, uh, some giants, some, uh, elementary things, and some undead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the that's the second level. That's the intermediate. Oh. Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, just out of curiosity, what would then be the extreme? Uh, extreme, you see an exotic monstrosity. Um, a uh, where's uh, another monstrosity? A big, big, scary one. Uh, and the last one is some rather fucked up shit from the Shadowfell. I'm sorry. The old. God. <laughs> hmm. Well. Give us but a moment. I'll um, dictate with my allies. You want to know the amounts earned? I, I can tell you how much it's worth if you want to make the money. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, if you complete the easy, easy circuit, you get 200 gold plus whatever bonuses you get for appealing to the crowd. Uh, for okay. moderate, you get 500 gold plus any additional amounts if you appeal to the crowd. And for extreme, you get a thousand gold plus whatever you get from appealing to the crowd. Uh, when you say appealing to the crowd, is it like a, a like a showman kind of thing? Like, a, is yeah. it like a? Okay. It's one thing to fight, but it's another thing to fight in an entertaining manner that captivates an audience and tells a real story. You know. You don't <sighs> say. We're wrestling how, now. How many? Uh, I was gonna say, I'm going over, brother. <laughs> how many? How many fights? How many fights back to back? Uh, well, you get breaks in between, um, about two hour breaks in between each fight, and you have three rounds. So, aka, you get a short rest between each round. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Give us but a moment. Of course, of course. Um, if you want, there's a table upstairs if you wish to talk. You can take whichever one's cleared out if you like it. Uh, if you're interested, you got plenty of time to register. We're still getting people in. Aye, that'd be great. We'll be back. 
we guess we head upstairs to this table. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. absolutely freaking Luli. Gaius's enthusiasm is gone. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, this is different than we thought, right? I certainly is. Yeah, uh, didn't know this was to the death and that we would all be a part of it. Hmm, that was not my intent. Well, like, I, I, I believe that. Also, what was that about a king? Yeah, that's a new one on me, Otho. Matarolo has no kings. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Well, I don't want to tell that to the guy downstairs. Nope, but it's also not really our issue. It's kind of their thing. Guys, how are you feeling? Guy shakes his head. No, I'm not placing the lot of you in a precarious situation on my behalf. I refuse. It's disappointing, but I'm not doing it. Are you sure? To be honest with you, no. But I also know that he looks over at... He looks over at, uh... At, uh... Oh, God, I'm sorry. He looks over at Otho, who looks like he's been having nothing but a fucking miserable time since the moment they came in here. He looks very, like... Wound up, like... You would probably see that he's, like, got his hands on his coin pouch and one near his weapons. Guy shakes his head. This isn't the competition I was looking for. I'm sorry if I've done nothing but waste all of your time, but I'm not going to put a lot of you in a situation, especially to the death, when I thought it would just be for competition sake and nothing more. A fleeting dream, I suppose, ever since I was a child, just to think about it, but none of this sits right with me, even if we were to take on the smallest amount, simply for the showmanship part of it all. What if we looked at it like a scouting mission? How would you deem that? Well, I mean, some of the things that they were mentioning, I've only heard stories about, and apparently they have undead here? Like, no offense to them, whatever they have is probably not as bad as what we're eventually going to see. But if they have some unique and rare stuff, I mean, who knows? The stuff we fight here might give us tactics and insight on what we're going to face when we go back to you know where. I don't want to kill something that has my blood. I think I'm with guys on this one. This doesn't feel right. I don't want to go around killing just for money or for the sake of it. I spent so That's much time. Much. I spent so much time learning how to heal. And it just feels like it betrays all of that. As much of a good point as you make, Kai, I think I'm with them as well. Kai, I don't want to be this way. I would have liked to compete in something to show prowess, to show how far I've come, but not at the expense of killing another person. Especially not a giant, something that I'm only slowly starting to gain a grasp of, of what my blood is capable of, and then thrown into a situation where I have to end the life of such a thing. I can't do this. Otho. Yeah. You get a weird feeling as you're sitting there. And you can hear a crowd kind of like cheering and, and cooing. And a few girls kind of like, ah, kind of scream. As you hear a voice go, they're over here. And you hear some nods. And you see someone part the crowd and begin to approach you all. And as you turn and look, you see this gentleman. Oh my god. Oh, art uh -oh. time. Wait, what gentleman? Huh? Whoa! Oh no. <laughs> oh god. Wow. Why don't you go ahead and describe this individual okay, for our Citric. podcast listeners? You see a I'm gonna just say devilishly handsome 
uh, buccaneer pirate looking guy with a very, very well groomed beard. Uh, he wears a very simple tabard, a very nice set of like sort of baggy pants with a sort of net around his waist and very nice boots. Around his shoulders is a long leather buccaneer sort of like coat just resting over his shoulders. And a distinctive note that he has is he has five scabbards at his sides and he's got a big smile on his face like he walks past a halfling woman and goes oh you're here and one like kisses both cheeks and she's like oh jackson and he's like oh i kind of oh, gives geez. her a bit of a schmooze <laughs> um but as what a he approaches oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> he's 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 using the charisma um, but as he very seems to be making a trek towards you, you see that he's flanked by about four of these really well armored black steel guards. One of which is clearly a minotaur, the rest of which you can't really tell, as these individuals are wearing rather like faceless looking helmets. Uh, and as he approaches, he actually just sits down at your table uh, and kind of like kicks one of his feet up and he goes, well, 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 new guests at my fine establishment. I, to be honest, I am quite, quite honored to think that uh, I would have the son of Brutus Valentinius walking their way directly shit. into my establishment. I am honestly but honored. But you shut your mouth a little bit. And that will we'll take our break there. No! Oh, no! For fuck's sake. Well. Art by Citric King, by the way. Good job, Citric. Very well. Well, he has to. So, guys, uh, change of plan. He has to die. Immediately. No, no, we no, can't kill a man no, with this five is, swords. You like this guy, right, Kai? Yeah, this is this is you know this is your your people. This you is know, no. Listen, criminals. I think he's a great. I think he's a great guy. He just has to die. It's not personal. Listen, we can't kill a man with five swords. There are rules against that. Bro, what the fuck? I have seven weapons! I was going to say, the Gaius is dead. That's why we haven't killed you guys. Guys, he doesn't have five swords. He has five scabbards. See, he's a fake. No, no, he has five swords. We just can't see them. What? What is he, John Cena? So he's swords, bro. So he's Odin is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Connor. That is a one-piece run. <laughs> I've, I've For heard those of, of you playing the home game <laughs> please check off your one piece reference box now i'll be right back <laughs> welcome to movie shout box. out shout out to our our bingo maker they actually took a break yes. they're feeling very overwhelmed so yes. i i hope you're having a Yay. good break and and anyone who does fan art or anything fan related you are not we are not twisting your arm for it. If you need to take a break, please take care of yourself we appreciate Man, it we know that but... school is starting up soon yes yes here school is back on um and i hope and life are... happens you know yes so take care of yourselves no obligation. always look out for number one yeah yeah no one wants to pee their pants well on That's that note one. welcome into the bosco <laughs> halftime show where we definitely Fuck hope you sake. don't pee your pants i'll be right back yeah you just you should go uh i'm gonna go ahead and read some bits and subs uh we've got Wolfwing Pop 69, thank you for the 24 bits. Ed, how was has been? Did you know Alistair was on someone's leash back in the pilot? I knew a lot of things back when I did the pilot. Uh, that was something that, yes, was maybe alluded to, but I'm not really going to get into that because you should just watch the show. What I know and what I do not know will not come out on this stream, I promise you. Uh, Blackfoot Ferret with the 500 bits digging the Capri <laughs> Wolverine. Uh, Mika Apache, thank you for the 10 bits. This pick gives me the, he's a lying trickster, but he has a heart of gold and good intention vibes. I hope he becomes a friend. Uh, we've got Dice Roller, thank you for the bits. Kai, don't worry guys, nothing will go wrong. Random man. Well, if it isn't Otho Valentinius. <laughs> Burnout Vaughn with 100 bits. I was not prepared for Jack Sparrow by way of Monty and Citric. I love him already. Well, then I'm, I apologize for the fucking ass whooping he's about to eat but yeah welcome into the unexpectables thank you guys for joining us on your wednesday nights you could have been anywhere in the world and you chose to spend your wednesdays with us we appreciate it callum draws thank you for the 100 bits wanted to thank you all for the stream so far got some upsetting news today and y'all are helping out a lot 
Relatable, uh, Callum. I feel you. Also, Bosco, just a heads up, you are peaking on your microphone, so you might want to lean back just a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, weird. I will turn it down, too. Uh, Proto Saber, thank you for the 200 bits. I say again, scatter. Uh, Zen Litta, thank you for the 100 bits. Can't wait for the boys to meet the proprietor of the whole place, an unmovable mountain of babushka known as the Thresher Ma. Interesting. I see. Ace Bounty, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Uh, the If Monty put a coin star in her game, everyone <laughs> would be putting in Electrum. Uh, Ride the Rails, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Ed, I hope you're having a good night. I'm going to run a Curse of Strahd for my players and was wondering if you had any tips. I think the best tip I can give you, and this is kind of universal for D&D, talk with your players beforehand about how Strahd they want Curse of Strahd to be. It can be extremely dark and extremely brutal. And if that's what they're looking for, you can write it or run it rules as written. And it will be a very challenging module. That being said, uh, they might not be interested in that. So just make sure that they understand what is on the table and what they're getting into. Because Curse of Strahd is a very deadly module if run as written and not edited or anything like that. Uh, the other thing is it's traditionally gothic horror. But you are more than welcome, especially if you're doing any kind of homebrew in there, to change it up to better fit your players. The biggest thing is just making sure your players know what they're getting into. Because Curse of Strahd is not for everyone, especially just the book as written. So that would be my biggest piece of advice. Because as you'll know, with my Curse of Strahd, definitely around the area of the books, the fringe of the books, but not running the actual books. Me, Pachi, thank you for the 10 bits. I want to see a tag team between Gaius and Shifted Otho in a Luchador mask. <laughs> Oh, man. Would it, wouldn't that just make him Tiger Mask? Who's Tiger Mask? And that, and that right there is a reference for all of you old school wrestling fans who follow Japanese And wrestling. anime fans. I mean, come on. That's yeah. true. He did have his own anime. I'm shocked you know that one. Why would Gaijin not know that? Why would I not? Well, so dude, the, I did. So okay. that was that was hey, back hey, with like Kimba the White Lion. Was like that hey. was old. That was the hey, 60s. Hey Bosco. Hey Bosco. Yeah. I did a video on it. I'm you now I'm watched it on Tiger Mask. Mm. I am uh, Bosco the fake. I man. am thoroughly impressed. Fake, fake fan, fan of what? Fake of fan Gaijin. of me. Yeah. Uh, first of all, who said I was a fan? Second of all, also that's I see unfair. you, wise quack. Oh, wise I'm gonna go get more tea. King is a hundred percent a reference to Tiger Mask. Like hundred percent, yes. Also, I'm back. I have chili. A wrestler Ooh. in a cat mask. I'm sure it is a reference. I'm back and Are I am chili. Uh, Tixel Dixel, thank you for the hundred bits. The tea is piping hot, and I'm here for it. Thank you for the remainder or for the reminder to take a break. Proto Saber with the 600 bits. I'm going to slip off for the night. Thank you all for streaming and cheering me up during my first ever bout with COVID. Aw, it's Aww. helped a lot, even though it hurts to laugh. We'll stop that. Feel we're better glad soon. that you could join us. Yeah, get some rest. It's important. It's a rough one, so be, be good to yourself. Fully Cooly 9000, thank you for the 100 bits. Orc, Jackson's the king. He has the right to rule. Otho, well, I didn't vote for him. Well, I didn't vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> Mikan Pachi with the 10 bits. Also, Monty with the seagulls. Were they attacking the short elderly green frogman in robes? He think... is in a fine establishment in the upper mm. city. He would not be down here. <laughs> Frog just watched the city streets get picked up by a seagull disappears. <laughs> Gone forever, but not it's forgotten. Like that, it's, it's that scene from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. The rat birds were a mistake, <laughs> but everything else was fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, Claudia, the chance of meatballs one is so good. It's oh. so good. There's so many amazing jokes in that movie. That I love the like, one where it's like the ice cream, and it's just like strawberries. My favorite is the one kid. No. I'm like, man, I feel that. Props to you, strawberry kid. I know how that feels. I was strawberry <laughs> kid in my day. Ace oh. Bounty, thank you for the 45 bits. I remember that video, guys, and that was the one about Incineroar, right? It sure was. See, someone's wow, a real that fan. Is that is a, first of all, yes, that is what a real fan looks like. That Second makes of all, sense. Now, now, I think now, I'm, now I'm impressed <laughs> that you talked about Incineroar and Tiger Mask in the same video because apparently cat wrestling is a thing in Japan. And now I am interested because it's, it's not theme. at all what the connection was, but okay. Total theme, man. Wrestling cats. They what is going on? More balls. news at 11. All right. Are we all back? I think so. 
Probably. I am not. eating. I am eating my chili as fast as possible. Hell yeah. Uh, Marcus, you're Marcus. Oh my God. I'm Marcus. Sorry. Marcus. I'm sorry. Oh I'm He's sorry, Marcus. We have many fake fans. We have. In the, in the, we we have. Tonight. I have a friend I play D and D with on Fridays named Marcus. Unbelievable, Marcus. Shout out to you, Marcus. Uh, sorry, I am not here in this game. <laughs> I'm here in. You want to look into my creepy metal eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. All right. Fuck this. Uh, got steak. Uh, Connor, you good to go? Oh, yeah. Bosco, you good to go? Absolutely not. Gaijin, you're good to go? Mm hmm. Mark, you're good to go? Indubitably. Zito, you're good to go? Chili? Chili uh, uh, deployed? Almost finished. Chili okay. deployed. <laughs> Chili deployed. Chili deployed. Literally Man just ate the last bit. All righty. Chili With launch that. detected. Let us delve back into the Unexpectables. It's called the World of Wonder. God. Sorry. I'm a fake fan of my own. You are a fake fan of the Unexpectables. <laughs> fake fa wow, a fake fan of your own cosmology. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. you built a show just to be a fake fan of it. As this gentleman kind of walks over and very much like owning the place, sits down next to you and kind of smiles. He does say to you, I am shocked that the sons of Brutus Valentinius would grace my establishment. He did say sons, yes? Yeah, he said sons. Oh, plural. I thought he said son. Nope, nope. plural. Plural. Shit. There are a few eyes that turn towards your table, but the King Jackson kind of waves at them and they're like, oh, hi, and then go back to what they're doing. <laughs> Hello. Hello. And this gentleman sits down and just gives you the biggest smile. And he goes, I'm curious. I'm going to take a guess here, okay? About why you're here. I'm going to guess probably not the drink. He kind of like gives a pouty face and looks at you. you. Don't seem like you're here for the women. Um, Business Damn. arrangement? Meeting someone for business, maybe? Is Last I heard, answer? you were in a... I'm going to say, yes, that is my final answer. Business. <laughs> you would incorrect. be incorrect. Damn. Okay. Well, what is it then? Mm. Oh, that's not how that works. Oh, it isn't? No, we're just having a good time. Is there something we can help you with? I'm just genuinely curious why you're here. I mean, you know, your father... So am I. I'm curious how you become... A king in a place with no king. And now that's what I would love to know about. Gaius holds his hand over to Kai just to be like, no, it's fine. Let me do this. <laughs> he kind of looks at I you a little perplexed, uh, Kai, but then looks towards you, Gaius. I came here with the veiled hopes that the fight pit would be something I would like to compete in. His eyes kind of narrow at you, Gaius. Mm -hmm. He kind of cocks his head and he goes, I... No, 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 no. We never met before. You look a lot like someone I met, though. The only other person I would believe you might have saw was my uncle. Tadg, I believe his name was. Gaius fucking perks the oh, shit. Oh, no. He said Hi. the name. Oh, you're, that makes sense. Hair's a little different color, but the, the face and the sort of um, sateriness to you is, is quite unique. How is he doing, by the way? I don't know. I came to this area in hopes of finding him. Oh, any luck? None yet. Hmm. But really, the whole purpose of me coming here was to... He looks over at the fight pit. I did have hopes of joining that, at least in competition, but... Unfortunately, the fight to the death bit and putting my friends in the heat of battle for my sake alone was not something I was wishing to do. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you. Honestly, what a caring friend. He kind of looks towards the rest of you. Really, quite interesting. I mean, it's to the death because it is a kill or be killed sort of environment, but I can understand why that can be difficult for some. I mean, the beasts oh, we bring in here are... <laughs> A guy, Challenging. guy who smiles. Oh no, it's not that it's difficult. It's just that I enjoy the art of the sport of fighting more than the art of killing. 
then I wonder why the risk of death isn't appealing to you. It's not, not, not when most warriors strive, when they're pushed beyond their limits, fighting a foe that would see them dead before their blade. That's work. The guy just holds up his, hit, his fist. This is for fun. Oh. Well, your uncle didn't seem to think so, but again, you're different, so it doesn't matter. Still, though, you're his nephew, I'm assuming? Aye. To see his nephew traveling amongst such high society, you've quite grown up in quite the world. I'm, I'm very impressed. I've just been lucky. Hey, yes, money? Yeah, go for it. I I know it's a meme at this point. Thank you, Connor. I want to incite him because I want to try to get a vibe of how much of him is being genuine That's, and how yeah. much of it is kind of for show because I'm getting... Uh, the the old the old sun alarms going off. Go for it. I I also would like to incite him specifically to see if he's trying to get information <sighs> Never mind. from us. I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, Did you? I can roll. Uh, I can roll insight on the next question. I give him. anyone. Yeah, anyone who wants. I'd say e scan now. But if he talks again, if you would like to, Gaius, you can as well. Yeah, yeah. I I'll, I'll ease into a question. That's gonna be a sixteen. Sixteen. You cannot read this, man. Wow. Mm. Okay. He's very charismatic. You get the mm. sense that he's... You're not even sure. You're like, is he lying or not? This is... I don't know. <laughs> However, he kind of uh, looks... Go uh, ahead. Oh, I... I what, what is, was he going to look to someone else? Because I was going to ask him a question. Yeah, go for it. You can ask him a question. I am different, yes, but... I still, while I don't share the thrill of killing a person, I do share a thrill. I, you are right about one thing. I have a thrill for combat. Though, now I have to ask a question. When was the last you've seen him? Oh, months ago. He seemed a um, very reliable bounty hunter, him. Your uncle is quite well, well, well suited for that line of work. He was working with some bounty hunters, but um, hmm, he kind of taps his chin a little bit and strokes his beard and he goes, you know, seeing you fight like your uncle, it might be able to rouse those memories back of him and his business. I might have a better time remembering. No, Gaius, don't fall for this. hes I've seen his type before. Gaius shakes his head. I would... I would only have one condition, and I will not have you ruin your establishment for my part, sir. My stipulation would be is that a fight to the death is not the whole thing I want. I just want to fight for fun. And mm. if that, if I cannot be given that, at least to a person, a intelligent opponent, then I unfortunately will have to decline. Ah, uh, that makes things tricky. I mean, having you fight other people would be very, very awkward indeed. I mean, this fight pits also doubles as a bit of a service. So, uh, unfortunately, I'd have to reconsider. But, I, I mean, I, I, ad I admire your sympathy and mercy. I have to say that's a very lovely trait. A bit refreshing, if I'm not going to lie. Um, but, that being said, uh, the rules are rules. I mean, I am the king. I can have them bent if I see fit. But... What did you seek? In, what did you seek out of me in combat that would make you so interesting to bend the rule? Well, I'm not gonna lie. Hearing about your group coming in certainly piqued my interest. We have every sort of cell sword coming in here. You see, the people who do the best in the fight pit eventually become my guard. And he points to the four guards behind him who look like absolute like brick houses. <laughs> I assume you're not interested in that. Money is good. I could see that you get a bit more money. Um, I just am curious is all. I'm curious to see how the Sons of Brutus Valentinius fight, as well as a, a 
lizard folk far, far to the north, and uh, this lovely, smiley little fellow here, I get an air of violence from him. It's really kind of off-putting. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I feel like you're like a little bomb, like a cute little bomb that once the fuse is hit, it's just gonna bang, you know, explode. But that's just the vibe I'm getting. If I'm wrong on that, you can correct me, of course. Just, uh, squints a little. <sighs> For everyone else at the table, Oh. Guys is fucking incredibly conflicted now, knowing that. Where th are my man? Oh, I should get right. you guys some drinks. Um, um, I know you probably the two of you have quite a refined palate. We don't have any champagne, but hopefully, maybe some of our our pathetic peasantly uh, wine will suit your palate. If not, you're can free I, to spit it on the floor. If you can I incite this man? Yeah. To see I if he's sort of shit. I want to see if he like resents our presence here like if he like does he feel threatened that we're here go for it uh on, toy, to toy insight here we go it's slightly better 17 <clears throat> all right well he rolled absolutely shit um, Good. Otho, as you read this man, he is 100% fucking comfortable where he is right now. Like, there's not even a single point of stress in his body. He seems to be kind of chiding you and kind of, like, twisting your arm a little bit. Like, trying to get under your skin a little bit. Um, for whatever reason, it seems to be playful. Um, however, in terms of his discomfort towards you, he seems very happier here. In a very, like, that freaks you out a little bit, to be honest. Did he well, go to leave to get drinks? Since the jig is up, basically, no. Otho will just will just pull his hood back, revealing his hair and everything else. Uh, no, he waves down a waiter who runs off and eventually returns with like bottles of wine, and he watches King Jackson just like takes one in each between each of his fingers and places them on the table, and kind of slides some goblets to each of you. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, Gai Gaius is just fucking absolutely miserable now, just seeing how much <clears throat> now that there's fucking stakes involved, but he doesn't want to put anyone else through it just for mm. his sake. Hey Monty. Yep. Given my background, admittedly yep. being far from home, but given my background, how much like a business exchange does his buying drinks for us feel like? Um, that unfortunately would be another insight check. I'm happy Do you at least have advantage with his background. No, unfortunately not. Damn it. I tried. I'm happy to roll it if you'll let me roll again. If you had other specific backgrounds, you would have advantage, but unfortunately, you do not have the one you need. I'm I'm good to roll it again, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. Okay. That's worse. That's a twelve. I have to roll. It's competing, so. Yeah, you can't get a read on him, unfortunately. But yeah. he very generously pours you all drinks. Does he pour a drink for himself? Uh, yes, he does. And he, he mm -hmm. takes a very generous sip of his drink and kind of full-bodied, light, yet pleasant. Uh, let me think. Uh, also, uh, Bosco, in terms of the question you asked, you may roll as well, if you wish. Okay, cool. I did not prep detect uh, poison. I will give it a shot. I hate to say it, but all alcohol 19. is poison. I know. All alcohol is yeah, poison. That's that's that is fair. a 19. <laughs> you get the sense as he's pouring you the drinks and pushing them in front of each of you. Um, Kai, you get the sense that he's testing to see how comfortable you all are with the drinks. He's kind of gauging your confidence right now. Kai's not going to drink it. <clears throat> Milo will not drink it because he doesn't have to. Otho will take the cup. He'll he'll smell it a little bit. What does it smell like? It's very nice wine. Very nice wine. Very nice wine. He'll he'll take a sip and he'll roll it around in his mouth. This you haven't had a wine this good since you were back in your home. This is, like, such good fucking wine. Like, it is full-bodied. It has a hint of sweetness to it. It has probably been aged for at least 100 years. 
it is a very, very nice wine. And it's honestly like, a, uh, it makes you relax for just a brief moment because it is so good. That is spectacular. For my own very, very broad collection. I mean- I'm sure you must have paid quite a pretty penny for it. It was a gift actually. Hmm. <clears throat> You will tell my friend more about his uncle if we fight for you? I feel like that's only fair. How much information are we talking? I can tell you where he went. Anything else? Um, I know. How about this? Make it a bit more lucrative and interesting for all of you. How about each of you gets a nice question and I will answer it to the best of my abilities. Any question? Any question. Gaius is subtly shaking his head no, just like, no, not for me. Just don't do it. And you're being genuine with that? Like, like supremely? Yeah, I don't, yeah. Oh, but... I, I'm like, oh, I want to do the fight pit. I know. Chris, Chris Zito <laughs> is like, I want to be a fight but, cop. But you're staying true to... I respect the hell out of you. I am staying yeah. so Gaius. goddamn yeah. true to Gaius Agni I right now. It, it fucking kills me. I respect it. I respect hey, it. I've been there. Gaius. Gaius doesn't respond. He just looks... He, like, he, he looks at you, but like he's still just like... There is so much conflict in his body language. So one more question then, uh, is is your highness is is that too much of a of a of a title? Is that appropriate? I mean, if you don't know what to call me, you can just call me king. But uh, you, you know what? I'm amongst high status folks. You can call me Jackson. That's fine. All right then, Jackson. Um, what are the stipulations of the tiers? Can it be any tier or ah, uh, any tiers fine. Are you it worried about something you're going to fight? You have a bit of a, a blah, kind of expression, which again, I understand that you might be a bit uncomfortable at the time. I don't know why you would be that. I mean, you're amongst friends here, There's but a giant in there. Oh well, he kind of swirls his glass a bit. He goes, "Giant." He does air quotes. I mean, certainly your adventuring party has encountered trolls before, yes. Guys, looks up. Oh that. no! <laughs> mm. I was gonna mm. say, Gaius. I don't know what you're thinking, but what I'm thinking is, is that I put you all in a giant situation. Huh. What I think, <laughs> what I think is, is that I put you all in a situation that does not need to put you in harm's way when I just wanted to have fun with combat and now there's an extra bit of weight to this that searching around for my family for the past two years now has a culmination point. Well, if you ask me after all the dead ends you've had, now it feels worth it. So, Gaius, can I ask you an honest question? Now that we're in company, I suppose so. Do you think there's any other way to track down your uncle? Because if the answer's no, then this is our only shot. If the answer's yes, then we can walk away. I have no idea. Okay, follow-up question. Then if it wasn't up to us, what would you do? If it was just you? I would go in there. He's going to turn back to Jackson. I'll tell you what, how about we fight your guards? Not to the <laughs> death. <laughs> God he damn stops it, his drink and looks towards his guards and he goes, Yeah, but you need to live for me to answer your questions. 
Yeah, uh, no, I think uh, the whole tears idea is probably a better idea there, Kai. What is in the bracket? You'd have to talk to Lars. You know, he kind of saps his finger and his servant runs up. Go get Lars. And then she's like, of course. And she runs off. And eventually you just see like an old guy coming up the stairs like, oh god. <laughs> like, oh god. <laughs> no. Oh my god. Lars, <laughs> no. <laughs> There's yeah, more every... stairs every time. <laughs> what was it? It was like, speaking of Arcus, like crackling every bone in the body. Crackle um, bones. Yeah, crackle bones. You see uh, the the half orc now that you his know his name is Lars, kind of making his way up with his clipboard. And as he approaches, he kind of acknowledges that he's seen you before, and he bows to King Jackson and goes, "Your Majesty." And King Jackson kind of goes. We can't give away the fights, of course. Surprise, surprises are part of the fun and the mystique, you see. But if you could just give them like a, just a brief overview of the three tiers for you assess what their particular strength is, right? And he kind of looks around and he goes, uh, yeah, they seem moderately capable, no offense, um, but uh, I, I picked them for these three. And he watches, he points out something on the clipboard, and Jackson kind of goes, Oh, oh! I don't think they'll have any moral quandaries about that. Maybe, maybe the easy round, the first fight, they might feel a little iffy, but the moderate probably. But he's got a thing about giants, and I guess trolls. You know, they're giants technically, but mm. no, they I are mean, not. Could... Hmm? <laughs> no, they are not. Ah, my bad then. Um. Yeah, so looking at this, the easy round, uh, it looks like you're going to be fighting some shapeshifters. This is the first round. Uh, the second round are... I actually have to look these up real fast to see if they are. Um, the second round pits you against about six fey creatures. And the third round has you fight against three monstrosities. Uh, the moderate round sees you against a giant, which, I mean, not a giant, a troll, forgive me. Um, the second round sees you against five monstrosities, and the last round sees you up against five undead. And the last round sees you up against a particularly rare monstrosity that I spent so much money to procure. Um, the second one is against a very strong monstrosity by itself, and the last one is against some fucked up shit we found from the Shadowfell. Uh, and there's five of those, specifically. I have no moral quandary about the first two. Yeah, so the last one, the extreme fights, you get a boatload of money, and I mean that in quite literally the most literal sense. We bring out your money on a tiny little boat. It's great. Um, but you're more likely to come out with less friends by the end of it, and as a personal host, I'd very much like to see all of you come out of this relatively alive. A question is not worth the price of my allies. But now that we have all this all this laid bare. Guy just looks up at everyone else. I care not for the money. And if the answer I seek leads me, at least in some direction, it's better than nothing. But I'm not putting you all in the arms of death for a mere question. Mr. Agni. Don't you think we've dealt with and are going to deal with worse than we find here? And in all fairness, you're right. You're not putting us there. We're going there on our own. When you didn't want to fight, we were behind you 100%. If you want to fight now, we're still behind you 100%. Look at Milo, he hasn't said anything. If I didn't know you all and hadn't been through what we'd been through, I would have said sod it and just walked away. Let it be your problem. I didn't want to fight. I didn't come here to fight. I came here to be with my friends. But if this is the fate of my friends, and I suppose I have no choice but to join them. Someone's got to take care of you out there. 
So he's. As you say that, Milo, one of the guards uh, behind Jackson's like, <gasps> you can see that Mark's <laughs> back, and like he's like, sorry, it's just it's very sweet. <clears throat> oh, I wasn't. Sure. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't I sure was if that was a. For a <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a laugh at, at Milo's no, expense. One of the guards like starts tearing up, and the guard smacks. I'm like, dude, and he's like, sorry, it's very, it's very sweet. <laughs> gets scary again. I'm a man. Ugh, get back in Although, there, Tear. I have one stipulation. I suggest that we fight only on the lowest tier. Either which way, it's things that I fight one side of my heritage while I fight another on another. But I'd much rather not see you all die. Whichever tier you believe is more beneficial or you have no issues with, I will accept. The money I care not for. Likewise? I I'm torn this is finally something I looked forward to for the longest time and guys just like sits like slumps his back against the chair and just holds his fingers to his face just like holding his holding his like the bridge of his nose honestly it's your call I'm we're all on board you, guys up. you need to make a decision we've been ruminating a little too long here mm -hmm. what are your choices here I'm going to tell you what, Zito, it's up to you. Yep. Whatever you want to do, I think we're all behind you. Thank you for your offer, but I decline. Ah, oh, it's a shame. But I understand you care so much about your friends, and that's, I think, honorable. Still, I would have loved to have talked more. I mean, if we just want to have general conversation, I'd love to keep you for at least a little bit longer, and I have plenty more bottles of nice wine. If you deem so. So, uh, I is this your first time? a lot of you all to decide. What was what was that, Monty? I'm sorry. No, no, it's all good. I, I, I think I interrupted you there, my bad. Jackson wants to make a uh, conversation specifically. Yeah, did he ask, is this our first time here? Yeah, he's like, so is this your first time here in Darkport? For some of us. Oh, come on now. There's no need to be vague. I'm not going to rip your head off. They're my guests. I'm not worried about you ripping off your head, but I've met people like you before, and they always want something. Oh, so I... forgive me if it's a little off-putting. I guarantee you, you have never met someone like me. And he smiles this really big smile. Oh, I I've am. Seen you want for nothing. I am one of a kind, baby. See, this is what I mean. Like you speak in riddles. I don't understand. What does that mean? It means I am King Jackson. I'm me, and there's no one else like me. I. I can only offer some sort of insight at that. Usually in stories such as these, or at least the ones I've read, a declined offer is met with opposition by the rest of the guard around them. So far, not having daggers drawn at our necks because we said no is a nice change of pace from the stories. <laughs> I'll leave that to their father. And he jabs a thumb towards Kai and Otho. Okay. Mm. All right. You know something mm. a little bit about our father, it seems. Of course I do. He's an ocean lord. It's my business to know what he's up to. Mm. Oh, it's your business. What oh, sort yeah. of business would that be? A business where I shelter the delinquents and the unwanted. Those which the other ocean lords cast and deem as worthless. Business is a sort of uh, robotic construct way to put it, but the truth of the matter is that I give police people a place to go where there is no place to go. And that's why you call yourself a king. No, I call myself a king because I'm a fucking king. Of what? Of Motorolo. You're going to have to elaborate 
on that because if you're the king and you've got all these people that need your help, why don't you do something? Oh, I'd love to answer a question like that, but unfortunately it sounds like you're not going to be fighting in the arena. So mm. put the remedy on that one yourself, I'm afraid. No, I think I already know the answer to that one. I'm curious. What's your theory? If you were as in control as you say you are, you'd be able to do more. But I think what you want to do is be more in control. And now that you've got a pair of Ocean Lord kids in your midst, any information that you can get to get another leg up is one step closer to being just a little bit more in power so that maybe you can actually do something other than talk. That's half true. I am pleased you're here. I have to say, I, I'm s certainly shocked, but it's a mixed feeling. I mean, I, I heard that you, one of you was kidnapped recently and your father did little to nothing about it, which I have to say, that, um, that definitely sucks. Um... <clears throat> But, I mean, I'm not an idiot. I know that your father's position will not ever be provided to you. It's not inheritable in the ways that are traditional. Um, but, still, a leg up on the competition. You can't fault me for that. No. I'm just saying I know your game. No fault. It just is what it is. It is what it is, indeed. Indeed. But, you know, that being said, you can understand my curiosity in that regard. Aye. Yes, you do seem like your business to know things. Oh yes, of course. Absolutely. Honestly, I, I thought, you know, I, I said business and I thought you might have business with me. Perhaps looking for an ally, given the fact that you've seemed to have lost one of your strongest, or I could be mistaken, it sounds like you found new friends who seem to be a bit more capable and certainly a lot more caring to your well-being, if I might say so. Well. Seems you might not know everything. Oh? Hmm. This wine is delicious. It is. It's a Tresselin Court. Fine. It was gifted to me from a vessel that I saved out on the open ocean. You know, I thought it might be Tristellan. The Dragonborn are so good at brewing. Surprisingly so. Honestly, it makes the dwarves jealous sometimes. They have uh, their strengths. Monty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to write a note and pass it to Milo as discreetly as I can. Okay. Uh, Roll a sleight of hand, then. Good cool. luck. <laughs> do, 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 do. Twelve. You fold it up and you slide it to Milo. It seems like Jackson's eyes are locked onto Otho right now. Excellent. He seems to actually genuinely be enjoying enjoying your company, Otho, in a weird way. Uh, do you read the note, Milo? Of course I do. It says cast detect magic. Uh, hmm. That is not a thing that... Uh. Money, is there... Oh, oh, you know what? No, no. I can do this. I can do this. Oh. Uh, uh, Jackson, um, mm -hmm. uh, can, can I call the restroom right quick? Yeah, it's just down there. And he points his thumb. One of my guards can escort you if you want an entourage, but you seem very capable of yourself. He does oh, that yeah. like, it's like Dude. a half, it's like a half squint, like what, why? I don't know if I even want to know kind of squint. <laughs> and then just, it just leaves. Okay. Friend, you're in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the piss joke, and he just where do, you think, you? where do you think I got this wine? Pours so, a bottle of wine and gives it to you. So, Monty, I'm going. I'm, I'm just for expediency's sake. Uh, I'm going to find, try to find a stall that is unoccupied. Oh, uh, easy enough. Yeah. Spend spend ten minutes to ritual cast and take magic, and then come back as if you know things happened. He kind of, as as Milo leaves, Jackson shows up. He's a cute little fellow, worshiper of the sun. I've heard they've been doing better as of late. I guess you'd have to ask him. I guess I would have to, yes. Doing better? What do you mean by that? Oh, the Orin clergy has not been seen very well in the public. Certainly not to the far west. There was a rebellion, like, I want to say 20... 21, 22 years ago or so. 
rebellion. Yeah, apparently the clergy was conspiring with demons or something. Turns out it was a theocracy on false worship. Apparently they have some new instated leader at the time. I see. That would certainly explain a few things. But it certainly painted the Orin clergy in a very negative light. To be honest with you, we get quite a few people from Periton in these shores. Most of them come through Darkport because, you know, because they're not so well loved, the Ocean Lords are a little bit less keen to allow them into the city sometimes. Reputation and all that. That makes sense. It does? I suppose it makes sense to you. He takes a sip of his wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, those scabbards on your hip, they seem to be a varietal of different makes. I think I see an Eastern Island one as well. Hmm. You're very observant, yes. They belong to my great-great-grandfather. Is that so? He smiles at you. Though, and do mind my ever so keen observation, the blades seem to be missing. Well, you have to ask your father about that one. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm sure that's a story. He grabs the brown scabbard at his waist and unlatches it and holds it. He goes, <clears throat> yes, well, you know what goes in here. Um, Do would we? I recognize the scabbard? The scabbard looks like it would fit your father's blade perfectly. Oh, look who he took the blade from! Ah. Oh, well, that explains a lot. So, I've always wondered how he got to his position. Don't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna look at the bullshit. I, I, pull, I pull a rare drawer on him and stab him in the leg. <laughs> oh, God. I always want. Ha! Wine. <laughs> Lovely wine! <laughs> God. Five I scabbers. I always wondered how he ascended to his position. You know, I've always wondered that, too. Well, I know initially how all of them did, but, like, now, his current position, flaky as it is, I'm genuinely curious. Well, no one managed to take Woolbreaker from him. I'm more curious how Woolbreaker ended up with him. You know, its previous wielder died of old age, right? I did not know that. Your event. grandfather, I assume. Oh, no, no, no. My great-great-great-grandfather is far beyond your understanding or knowledge. Hmm. You want to know about him, you fight in my arena. Well, I suppose our respective family matters shall remain a secret in that case. Oh, it's not a secret from me. I know your father quite well. Seemingly better than you do, based on that little tidbit I just fed you. You're welcome hmm. for that, by the way. I'll take it as another freebie, and he will gesture towards the wine glass. He pours more for you and slides the goblet towards you. Milo, at this point, your detect magic has been casted in the bathroom. Well. You're, like, playing the incantation in the next <laughs> bathroom. And as you, like, walk out, there's, like, an orc <laughs> washing his hands, giving you, like, a weird look, like, what the fuck are you doing in there? <laughs> listen, it was, it was a very delicate situation. The, the school <laughs> trouble, I need no, to I'm not, think. Listen, I get it. I, I'm not... My brother's got irritable bowel syndrome, so I understand. <laughs> as, as, as someone who actually has that, Same. Uh, Same. 
Just uh, the vocal components. <laughs> oh no! It's what it sounds like when I'm having trouble. So. It's, Bro, uh, that, that, that was very. Who does number two work for? <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's far more than just verbal components. I'll let yeah. you know. <laughs> anyway, I will make my way back Heavily after washing somatic. my. I will wa I will make my way back after washing my hands because I'm not a goddamn troglodyte. Mm -hmm. uh, as you walk out, there's little peppers of magic. Uh, most of them appear to be like trinkets, things like that. Uh, the fight pit, though, however, the um, the sort of inner part of it, you can sense that there's abjuration. You get the sense that there's a sort of shield in there, probably oh, to keep out. any any sort of like you know, you know, like a like an AOE spell from exploding mm -hmm. into the audience or something. You get the sense of sure. Um, However, as you get closer to the table, uh, the scabbards that uh, Jackson has are magical. Um, however, everything else on his person does not appear to be magical. What school? Uh, oh, boy. Okay. Okay. All right, notes. I'm going to the notes. Yeah, hold on. I got to pull it up here. Man, above game, I'm mad at my own character for fucking dropping the <laughs> No, you know, no, I, dude, I respect that, you so I'm much, right? Zeno, I respect the hell out of you. I respect it. I am a little sad because I spent like a day making an arena because you said you guys wanted to go to a arena, but it's yeah. okay. It's D and D, and I accept it. No, anyone Bonnie, ever I'm, says I'm fucking, I'm pissed no. at my own character. Don't worry. It's about okay. It. it is okay. If anyone ever says I railroad, I'll kill them. Yeah. <laughs> real. Take, that, you, take that, that, you two. Exhibit A. Yeah. Uh, one second. I'll try and find this one, too. Uh, all right. So uh, the scabbard, I'm just going to describe them here from the picture. Uh, the sort of curved Eastern Isles blade uh, appears to have an element of evocation on it. Sorry, which blade was that? The curved Eastern Isles blade. Mm -hmm. The one that in the uh, picture he's holding in his hand. That looks like a okay. katana. Yeah, that one's evocation. Katana. 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 Hold the deal. Um, the. Uh, sorry, I'm just checking the blades here. Uh, the very curved blade, almost Delvarian in design blade, uh, actually gives off an undisclosed school of magic, but you know it to be kind of similar to magic you've encountered before, which is sort of a primordial-esque magic. Which, uh, which blade was that? I apologize. It's like the, the one that very like curved the Delvarian blade, yeah. Curved mm -hmm. Delvarian blade. Primordial magic. Uh, question, is it similar to anything we've encountered in the <clears throat> mage vaults? Um, not similar to what you've encountered in the Mage Vault, okay. no. Because that was also primordial, if I'm not mistaken, sometimes. Uh, Milo will plop back down. All right, guys, what a miss. Uh, the, uh, the long black scabbard, oh. uh, gives off an air of abjuration. Okay. Sorry, I thought we were done. No, he's got five no, scabbards. Five. Yeah, there's five. Oh, yeah, there's five I've scabbards. only got three magics, so. The short red scabbards uh, gives off an air of conjuration. All right. And the brown scabbards uh, gives off an air of... <sighs> it's not really a placeable magic. Hmm. Um... Oh man, I have to look up the thing. One second, give me just two seconds here. I need to look up All good. So I <sighs> Sorry, I didn't think this would throw such a monkey wrench no, in no, everything. No, no, no. no, you're good. This is why I wanted you to cast it because I thought. Guys, and I'm on. here. <laughs> no, you're good. Hey, monkey hey. wrench. I see what you did there. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're hey. scratch. <laughs> Sorry. Milo, we were on the, the monkey wrench. The last brown scabbard mm -hmm. uh, gives off a cocktail. You sense conjuration, evocation, as well as some necromancy and something else baleful is the best way to describe it. Mm. Like it's a weird baleful? cocktail of, of like a lot of different things, but it's like faint. All right. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna side eye to Kai and like do a a very wide eye kind of just quick little huh 
and then just turn back. Hey. Basically indicating that it's the scabbards. I mean, I can't divulge that level of information. Like, got what, it, but just that's something you got that's, is what so that's like. Got it. So detect magic. You're like Pink ah, magic. something pinged. It's all right. If there, was, if there was, if there was a freeze frame, it would be holy shit face. <laughs> okay, good. To, that's uh, all. That's good enough. Perfect. One more detail, Milo. I'm very uh -huh. sorry. Uh, his guards, each of them has a magic sword as well. You idiot! Mm. We've all got magic swords. See what we'll a sword ahead of sword line. <laughs> <laughs> we could take them. One of them. Uh, <laughs> single, single one. We could take them out Maybe. to dinner, is what he meant. Correct. That's what I said. To a, yeah. on a date, right? Right. On a date, right? <laughs> so anyway, like I said, uh, what I miss. That was the bathroom. <laughs> he just, he just, uh, that, that, did that come from Jackson? Yeah. Yes. He just, Milo just looks perplexed, like, stop talking. And yeah. just with that look, he'd be like, fine. Oh, good. I just want to make sure it's up to par and it's very clean. We have to find, I, I, find an establishment here. I don't know. Was it, Monty? <laughs> it's okay. It was <laughs> I was about to say, it's, it's, a, it's a bathroom, Chief. It was Fairview bathroom level. I just get the vibe that this guy cares way, way too much about appearance and is not doing a good job at even that. Ugh. No. Well, no, seriously, what I miss? Well, apparently, uh, there's something about one of those scabbards or something. I don't know, there's a lot of words, but hard to follow. Milo looks inquisically at Isken, then to Otho, and then to Jackson. When you look at Isken, you recognize uh, the look of nervousness on his face, uh, uh, being in a situation where he doesn't know what he can say, and so is choosing not to say anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, fair enough. Well, is that it then? I apologize. I should generalize as well. That was a bit unkind of me. I apologize. Pardon? Oh, it's just, I mean, obviously you have your ties to your father, which is, I'm sure, its own egg basket, given his uh, sudden abandonment of you. But I do also know that you're quite cozy with the other Ocean Lords as well. You know, it's well, funny, you, you seem to have... push that button. It's you weird. You seem to have your fingers in all sorts of pies. Oh, every pie I can possibly get my finger into, of course. Milo just... Jackson... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Milo just, just hard looks at him and just simply says, do you just really, really like getting under people's skin? Oh, I love it. It's very fun. Cool. You know, I gotta, Guys, I gotta, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to be go. be better at it. I'm ready to go when y'all are. I think we're done here. Uh, just uh. one thing, one, one thing before we do go, because I'm, I gotta say, I'm, I am impressed. <laughs> A lot of information, obviously charismatic. Honestly, I can relate to a lot of what you do, like figuring out all these different angles and writing down information and keeping large amounts of data on everyone. Like, it's pretty impressive. But I just, I wonder, as somebody who shares the same neuroses, do you ever worry that you might just be missing something? Oh, that's a philosophical question. Um, you know what? I think I'm missing friends who could really use the information. Mm. You know, people who could really take it and, and run with it, you know. Mm. I have enough rumors for despots and bounty hunters, but people like you who could truly take advantage of what I know. Well, you're a rare breed indeed. I may have come on a bit too strong with the wine, but I hold no ill will against you. You've mm. not stolen anything from me. Honestly. I want to incite that. Go for it. Yeah. yeah. For I would also. Real. I want to see yeah. if that was pointed. Is That's exactly what I was looking for. Oh, yeah. Just definitely. make people talk. I may as well roll for it. As God well. damn. I cannot roll high tonight. 14. Right. I have not rolled above a 10, so I'm with you. That's a no, 17 for East Gen. Gaius is like that fucking meme uh... of people looking at the fucking table with a mouth agape. Also, I uh, love that Milo and Isken both are like tight uh, masters who just cannot. Yeah, we just cannot pull it off tonight. That's all right. We got some decent uh, ones in there. That's a sixteen. 
only E scan gets this, and you just beat it. Like, you mm. tie. Ooh. You got a 17 total. There's venom in the U. You didn't steal from me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's what I was looking for. That's exactly what I figured. Okay. Listen. I know that you seem a little tense. First impressions did not go the way I hoped, but you're always welcome back here to Todd. If you ever want anything at all, I'm willing to oblige. Careful, delicate personal exchange. I'm not advised, uh, adverse to, rather. You're always welcome to my wine, too. I like good company. People who hold a very civilized conversation, unlike these criminals and despots that your ocean lord so despise. But I digress. I see them out like safely and carefully. Yeah. And the guards kind of nod. Two of them approach you and the other two. Jackson kind of stands up, mm. uh, kind of takes a couple of the bottles that were left unopened and kind of hands them off to his guards. And he goes, and I hope to see you again someday. I heard you're doing quite good things. That little bridge to the far north is doing quite well for itself, I've heard. Yeah, uh, I, I appreciate the support. And best of luck with the whole king thing. You'll get it one day. Oh, I will. I I'll be will. waiting. Guy stands up last. Looks at Jackson. Perhaps when the bracket changes. And then walks away. I'll be sure to call on you then. You guys, stand up. The two guards kind of flank you. Just keeping an eye on you. They don't seem to be hostile in any regard. So it's not like we're being escorted out. It's more like... You're being it's watched. suggested mm. we leave. Yeah. yeah. You mm. intended to leave going to see to it that you do. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Yep. So, uh, back the way we came then? Yep. Are we far away from the location at this point? Uh, no, you guys are making your way out. Oh, cool. As I, I will wait to do something when, we, when we're just outside. Then. As Jackson walks away, you see like an older halfling woman go, oh, Jackson, darling! And he's like, oh, you look great today. Is that a new dress? And he's kind of just choosing <laughs> up with them. Uh, you want, kind of watch him. He actually approaches the vampire and goes, you're Matt home. My good sir, you haven't partaken of any dining tonight, have you? And he kind of jabs him in the stomach and they kind of exchange some laughter. Um, eventually, though, you eventually find your way outside. The guards kind of give you a bit of a... They don't really salute, they just kind of give you an acknowledging nod and then turn back as you are left outside. Cool. Ooh, excuse me. Where's the nearest non-offensible punchable object? Uh, Kai's some... right there. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. You know what? Fair, though. You punched him before? It's true. So is there like a like a wall or like a wooden post somewhere? Oh, yeah. yeah. There's there's easily some places to loiter around that have some, un, you know, crates and barrels and things. Cool. One moment. Giants might. No, there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You shatter you a you barrel. Saw, you did like, not see. Just, just silently walks up to the nearest empty crate. Fist fucking, like, shakes in agony, and he fucking just shillelaghs it with his fist down on the wood. Uh, the Wood Gallagher's out. You want, notice, like, two guys going to find a place to smoke. They turn the corner, see that, and they immediately go, <laughs> nope, and they just turn around. They're like, not at all. You guys are by yourselves in a bit of an alleyway. Well, that didn't quite go as we expected. You're right, Gaius? He doesn't answer you. Um, of course. No. No, I'm not. Is this... Is this more than the fight pit? I imagine it's about his uncle. It's, it's okay, I'm used at. to being at square one. Um, Goyes... Can I have a minute? Yeah. We have all the time in the world. We're walking back. Unless you all want to stick around and go elsewhere. 
Oh. We have all the time we have until we have our meeting. Guys, listen, I... I don't know if I'm ever going to be strong enough, but... One of the things that Orin blesses us with is... Sight. Understanding. Finding things that are hard to find, seeing through the darkness. And... I'm going to promise you right now... I'm not going to leave your side until I help you find your uncle. What you did back there... It was such a show of... Self... And control... And being true to yourself... And your values. That's something that's hard to find. So... While you may have given up a hint... I promise you that I'm going to help you find him. If we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. I left home knowing that I would most likely never see them ever again. The idea that I would even see my uncle on the road. Just a fucking fever dream. Nothing more than just someone who's pining for some sort of semblance of remembrance of what home he had could just magically walk in front of him like one of the dumb little stupid storybooks he reads. But that's not the reality we live in. I will hold on to my principles, Milo. But now at least I know what the concept of being jaded is. Guys, I know it's hard, but... If you hold on to hope, and you hold on to the people you care about, sometimes those fairy tale stories do end the way that you'd expect them to. Sometimes it's long and hard and dark, and but that's why you got your friends, because your friends stay with you, and they help you when they need it. I don't know if I'm ever going to reach the level of divine capability of of that level but if i ever do and i can help i will when it comes to that i'm sure we will just leave me to ruminate for a few please all right yeah we should probably get out of here jackson's gonna have ears everywhere After you, then. Yeah. Kai's gonna walk out of the alley and head back towards the gondola. Okay. Different gondola driver this time. Uh, rather portly, uh, bronze dragonborn. Currently, like, just seems to be drinking out of a flask, enjoying his night. As you appear, he goes, oh, and kind of corks it, and then allows you onto the gondola. Interestingly enough, you never pay for these things. Um, but he... Kind of following your instructions kind of takes you guys once again through the similar path. Uh, he bumps into more things though, and he's like, son of a bitch. He's kind of like trying to <laughs> keep you guys steady. Um, but eventually you find yourselves on the other side, actually closer towards the Blue Top District. Uh, he kind of, you know, does a polite bow, almost stumbles off of his boat, but manages to save himself there last minute. Um, you guys, find your way on the other side. At this point, it is probably like 7 or 8 p.m. at night. Above game, I think we should probably make our way back to the inn. Yeah, yeah I was going to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just to be safe. And then if we want to have any conversations, we could do it there. Yep. All right. You guys make your way through the city streets at night. Eventually finding your way to the gentle waves. Warm and boisterous on the inside. <clears throat> so it's pretty packed? Uh, it's not really packed, but there's definitely a lot more customers at this time of night. Uh... Is there enough? If we were to go upstairs, do the rooms have enough room for us to sit around? No, or are they, they pretty small? 
Okay. You can only fit like at most two people standing in those rooms. They're mm. very small. Then I suppose maybe we grab a table in the back of the the place away from a lot of the noise if there's any available. Yeah. Yep, easy Almost. enough. Yep. Um Sherry comes by and goes, Oh my gosh, you guys look even grimmer today. It's been a very long day. Okay, well, here you go. She gives you a table. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, can we just get a round of waters for the table? To start? You got it. Thanks. She Kai's going to kind of look... Kai's going to kind of get a feel for everybody. What's everybody's posture, I guess, starting with Milo? Like, just concerned. Concerned for friends. Like, kind of... Looking down a lot looking at Gaius periodically, but not, like, staring, because that would just be rude and weird. Um, mm -hmm. But just just kind of a little cloistered, just trying to figure out what he could possibly do to help. How's Gaius looking? Same face syndrome, but he looks like he's mm -hmm. about to cry. What about uh, Iskan? Uh, <clears throat> Iskan looks really far away. Like, he... It, like thousand yard stare are, kind of thing? He, well, his eyes are very distant. Like, he's clearly thinking about something, but he seems to, like, almost not even be paying attention to what's going on around everybody right now. And what about Otho? Otho's just... He he looks like he's thinking. He's, he's got, like, a very thoughtful expression. Like, he's compiling a bunch of information that he just learned in his head. Doesn't doesn't look angry or sad or frustrated or anything like that. He just looks like he's in deep thought. So Kai is going to sit up in his seat and kind of look around the room just to make sure that there's no prying eyes or ears. And he will then uh, put his spell book up on the table. So maybe I'm the, the wrong person to give the, the rah-rah speech, and maybe it's kind of the wrong time, but I feel like at some point today we've all pretty much felt the weight of the world trying to crush us underneath it. I mean, I could barely pull myself out of bed till Otho came and say, said hi, and now, I mean, guys, I'll be real, it kills me to see you like this. And Milo, I know you just want to help people, and there's no worse feeling in the world than not being able to help someone or... I'm sure your gears are turning a million miles an hour, Otho. I can only imagine what you're thinking. And he, he's gone. Are you hello? What? <laughs> yeah. well, kinda, it's kind of my point. We're all kind of stuck in our heads. So I guess I don't know if there's anything anybody wants to get off their chest. Bark. I I fully agree with that one. If I said what was in my chest right now, it would get us kicked out of this establishment. And there would okay, be so many the... objects broken right now. I feel nothing but rage. It will subside, but that's all I feel right now. I hate to say it, but this is what Jackson wanted. Oh, I. He got it. Yeah, he's good. That's I what really men don't like him. Do he's a vagabond who styles himself a king? The problem is he's really, really smart and very in the know. But there is I a little bit say of a smart, just well informed. Fair enough. I guess there's a difference. Yes, that being said, a network of people who have slipped through the cracks of Martorallo. and he's got some far-ranging information. However. As much as I tried to prod him, it seems like he's missing some really key information for now, which is good. And Kai yes. will kind of give Otho a knowing look to make sure that he's picking up on what he's putting down. Yeah, he's nodding. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, if he's going around pronouncing himself king, isn't there like a law against that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> No one would take that kind of claim seriously. No, but... If it would get 
the Ocean Lords involved if it became a problem? I suspect <clears throat> that quite a great deal of information that the Ocean Lords obtain goes through him at some point. Mm -hmm. I would not be shocked in the slightest. Um, Monty, question, just so that I can double check my notes. Mm -hmm. How many Ocean Lords are there? Technically, six. there are six. However, okay. in official capacity, there are five. Yeah, Vicarc is, uh... Yeah, she's... that's what I thought. Yeah, Ocean Vicarc... Lord in name alone. Yeah, Vicarc the Violent is, is very much as an ambassador, but a very, very, like, the most predominant one. So she does have, quote-unquote, a title of Ocean Lord. And Jackson had five scabbards. Five scabbards, exactly. See, now one of I'm glad, belongs... Connor, you're with me. One of which belonged to Oathbreaker. <laughs> yep. Oathbreaker. Uh, <laughs> Woebreaker. <clears throat> Woebreaker. <sighs> Guys, he's dangerous, but not because he thinks that he's a king. It's because he wants to be. Think about it. Five scabbards, five ocean lords. We already know one place he's looking. He is dangerous. I imagine he'll be keeping tabs on us. I think he'll be doing a lot more than that. Hey, Monty. Yeah? Just for shits and giggles, uh, I would like to detect magic to see if we were if we were potentially being spied on. Okay, you cast detect magic. Uh-huh. Uh, as you look around the room, you notice that some of the sailors have, like, you know, trinkets on them. Mostly mm -hmm. they're more rich-looking individuals. However, you detect nothing else. Do a do a slow nod and turn back to the group. One of the things you notice is that one of the tables is playing a game of dice, and one of those dice is magical, so someone might be cheating. <gasps> but... Oh hey, yeah, for oh shame. oh hey hey, yeah. Monty. In that case, just because we need, I I want to make this a little lighthearted, and I would be against cheating. Um, I'm a I'm a what? I'm a do that. Dispel? Are you gonna just spell magic? <laughs> spell magic on the card. Yes! Oh, God. oh, I love oh, it. Oh yeah, range 120 it's... feet. Yeah, as the guy with the cheated <laughs> dice like throws them into the bin, you see him go, oh, oh. <laughs> and the other guy oh. goes, oh, because he did all in and he just grabs all of his money. <laughs> <laughs> Milo does a small smile and then you just ended a man's the whole career. That's it. He's done. Washed up. You reap what you sow, my friend. All right, I had my fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Hey, uh, Otho, Kai? Yes. Yeah? If we have some time tomorrow, um, you guys know of a good courier? Courier? I'm sure Coleco has some fine men at his uh, beck and call. We could probably hire their services. I think I want to write my family. Oh. Kai's going to smile. Absolutely, Just, we can... You know, let him, let him know I'm okay. To, Certainly. To be honest, it would be good if I wrote to my ma at some point. It's been a while. And Gaius, I, I can only imagine how hard that choice was today. I just want to let you know, I'm proud that you chose to stick true to yourself. I know, like you said, you're angry about it, but that's one of the strongest things I've ever seen you do. Gaius stands up and walks to the bar and sits by himself. I think we just got to give him some time. I know, but like you All said, right. say to get off your chest. Just a piece of advice before we all go to bed. We should just assume for the time being that we've always got eyes on us. I don't like how much information he had from various sources and the range of those sources. So unless we know something secure, let's just be very careful about what we discuss with each other. Sound good? 
That sounds fine. And I say let's get some rest because today sucks and tomorrow can't be any worse. I take that back. Tomorrow won't be any worse. Well, tomorrow we'll be headed for the opulent scales and seeing if we can get some couriers out there. Who knows? Maybe charter a boat and get our minds off all this. Hmm. <clears throat> anyway, that being said, I'm going to get some sleep. I think I'm right behind you. As you all settle in for the night, that is where we're going to end the session for tonight. Yeah. Ooh, God damn boy. it, fucking Gaius. I hate you, you piece of shit. No, yeah, but so that was Zito, a moment. Zito, I gotta, like, I have so much respect for you for sticking to your guns when it would have been Dude, so easy to just be like, all right, real. just this once. Like, that shit's hard. Ugh, I, res so I respect that it. That was so I know. fucking lawful. Stupid! Oh, no, no, but no, we no, had no, no. Such we had that such was, a good moment come from that. That was such good RP because of it, dude. Yeah, yeah I, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I'm just sitting here just like, oh my fucking God, I'm going to do the lawful stupid thing. God damn it. <laughs> no, you're going to be do the lawful in character thing. You're going to be the lawful the good guys. role play thing. Cor exactly. Which, if I don't know if you saw, but in and out of character, everybody just got more respect for you. So Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it, it's what my character would do get such a bad rap. But, but that was an amazing example of it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Take us around the horn, Connor. Do the thing. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Toy to toy. Starting with... Gaijin Goomba. We'll, Spin we'll in the wheel. Going. Who are we going to we'll start go with? Who are we going to usual order? Uh, you Twitch that TV slash Gaijin Goomba every Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, 7 p.m. Central Time. I need to play an orc game this weekend because my my new 40k slash orc channel just uh hard opened. I don't know how else to put it. A uh, brand new video. I'm gonna drop it in chat. Uh, yeah. If you don't know anything about 40k, you don't need to. Um, this is just me gushing about silly, stupid orc things that I love and. That's how I got into this this mm. colossal franchise. I'm sorry, I'm boring. No, um, <laughs> no I know. Uh, it's how I got into this colossal franchise. It's fun. I actually got to um, act a little bit. I'm still waiting on my voice actor friends to tell me uh, what they think of, of how I did. But uh, yeah, no, like I, I know it's a weird shift, but all of my heart has gone into this and everyone who's seen it agrees. <laughs> Okay, that's me. I want to keep it short. Right on. Sounds super cool. Nice. Gonna have to watch it. Oh, Mark Allen Jr. Uh, I was just, you know, never mind. Go ahead. I'll, I'll save it as a surprise. Uh, Mark Allen Jr. Where can they find you? Down. What are you <laughs> You can find me on Twitter and Blue Sky at Mark Allen Jr. Here on Twitch at Aeon Pro Tech Gaming. Uh, find me on TikTok at Mark Allen Jr. VA and follow my cat bunny on Instagram at Chonk for Life. Uh, yeah, I still have music commissions open. Uh, always looking to talk with people about any ideas they might have. If you're not familiar, I have been making music since 2006. So, uh, I have a little bit of experience with it. Uh, you can check out my Twitch for some of my past three-hour music challenge streams and whatnot if you're interested at all. Uh, hit me a message. Shoot me a message. Don't hit me a message. That would be weird. Um, streams are still kind of weird right now. Uh, I am probably gonna stream tomorrow. Um... I I don't know yet. What? We'll figure it out. It's going to be fun and exciting. Um, yeah. Take care of yourselves. That's it for me. Right on. Up next, we've got Zito. Where can they find you? And what are you up to? Twitch.tv slash Zito. Uh, from now until the foreseeable future, until I feel safe about my finances, I'm doing nothing but commission work. So if you want to watch me draw, that's it. Right on. Monty Glue, where can they find you? And what are you up to? Uh, sorry. Uh, you can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter. You can find me Monty Glue on Blue Sky, Monty Glue on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, streams are potentially maybe no Dungeon Man Mage tomorrow. I don't know. Uh, big important one is that Sunday, I'm going to be doing a double date stream with Draco Hartsey and Arkholf uh, to hopefully help Draco repair their car. Uh, that unfortunately broke down. Uh, we'll be doing, we'll be having like a bunch of stretch goals like uh, hot peppers and a fursona and uh, a 
uh, nose pass uh, shiny <laughs> hunt, which <laughs> is horrid, but it's for my friend, so I'm willing to willing to do it. I say willing with the tiny gritted teeth, but whatever. You're um, able to do it. That's I'm able point. to do it. Yeah, for every <laughs> for every 200 rays um, will be another probo, another fucking probo pass I have to find, which. That could be a lot of them. I have to waste my precious Urban Mystic on that shit too, which is like, uh, anyway. Uh, but yeah, that, that's it for me. Right on. Oh, next we got Edward Bosco. Where can they find you? What are you up to? You can find me at Ed Bosco VA on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and right here on twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco, where Tuesday is Halo Nights. Thank you to everybody who came by the multiplayer night last night. We might be doing one more of those this upcoming week while we get ready for Halo 5. That will be the next lasso that myself, Heartsy, Evie, and Xanalus Grimm do together. It's going to be awful. It's the worst game in the series, and it's Lasso. Uh, Thursday is Throwback Thursday. We're doing some more Tomb Raider 2. Come by, check it out. It's an old-school PlayStation game. Uh, we've got Friday Wrestling, which will not be on Friday. It'll be on Saturday, which also happens to be when we do Yakuza Like a Dragon with my buddy Connor. He'll tell you more about that. And pretty, pretty sure we're going to have some more Baldur's Gate, so you should come check that out because that's going to be a lot of fun. Sunday is the Super Bowl. Leave me be. The Lord's Day of Rest is also my football day. <laughs> And Monday is Mass Effect Monday as well as uh, D&D, although we are on pause for just you're a little peaking. bit. You're Bosco, hmm? you're uh, Monday is D&D, but we're on pause for just a little bit. So Mass Effect Monday, come check that out. And that is me. Egg salad. Uh, as for me, they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Tumblr, and Blue Sky at Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, apparently my likes are public. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Uh, but yes, uh, I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, playing some Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, we're getting close to the end here, actually. We're, we're, we might wrap it up next session. Uh, we maybe might. the session after, but but we'll we'll keep you posted. Might um, be Psychoist City. Might be side quest city. I, I do have to seduce several women to get the to complete. It's true. The we have to finish quest. the lady side quest. I wish you all the best of luck. Oh no, it's just buying roses. That's it. No, all you need to do is buy them flowers. It's that, it's yeah, that easy. Just, yeah. I Words apologize so on behalf life. of of these two men to all the ladies out there. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's only the digital ladies it works on. It's just not like. Karen and Harvest Moon, where you just show your dog over and over, and but, she marries you. Instantly. You know what, though? But that does work in real life. That could That's work. That absolutely in real life. works. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, I've got my uh, DMs Guild, where I have Fifth Edition homebrew content available. Several subclasses, several spellbook supplements. So check them out. Uh. That's it for me. Basically, this episode was brought to you in part by Die Hard Dice. <laughs> wow, Discord cut you all the way out. Yeah, we, we got <laughs> so <laughs> thanks, thanks, Discord. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Die Hard Dice. It's your one-stop shop for dice and dice accessories. And if you head on over to dieharddice.com, you can use the code UNEXPECTABLES save 10% on your entire order. You can also pick up some Lies Aspect Dice, the official collaboration between the Unexpectables and Die Hard Dice. It's uh, true. Yeah, that is true. Um, also, check out our spring store. We've got all sorts of merch. Uh, gonna have a bunch of new stuff in the new year on that store as well, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, hopefully soon here. Uh, planning a little... Uh, gateway themed merchandise uh blink blank uh we also couldn't do this week in week out without business of viewers like you that's uh, my thing oh sorry where, go ahead where do we leave off uh we left off at uh vena norvius Fiend and Norvius. Yes. I believe they had 20 Ram bits donated, I believe. Oh my goodness. It was a message about kobolds. Uh, 
Well, there it is. I found it. Um, nice. Vina Nurgis, thank you for the 21 bits. Recently rewatched Oops All Kobolds. It was weird to rewatch The Unexpectables, not sponsored. Mm. Weird. Uh, Wolfwing Pup, thank you for the bit. Seagullmancer? Divine. Would they be a divine caster? <laughs> divine caster. <laughs> Gandorf, thank you for the uh oh, Gandorf. Fuck. Thank you for the uh 1000 bits. Uh, Unexpectables, hi. I've loved you guys since season 1, first time watching. Go enjoy the fight pit. We did. We sure did. Uh, we got uh, wrecked in a different way. Our earliest bread, thank you for the 46 months. Ace Bounty, thank you for the 100 bits. Good game everyone. And Gaijin, I've been watching since Culture Shock was on Game Theory. Oh god. Oh boy, there's a real fan right there. Back in the dawn of time. Uh, something is happening next week. That's all I'm oh. saying. What? Oh. Secrets? Oh I'm shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shocked. But intrigued. Uh, honor with a machete. Thank you for the 500 bits. Look at Uh. Yeah. Uh, Messenger Excellent. of Chaos, thank you for the 2,000 bits. Uh, great RP tonight, everyone. Zen Lita, thank you for the 100 bits episode title, Inner Battles. Big Whiskey, thank you for the 1.1k bits. Love you guys, and y'all make me love D&D more and more. I would love to be able to get into a session like this where everyone role plays. Mega Waffles, thank you for the 5 bits. Didn't realize my drawing of Giga Chad Gaius in the Discord would be coming in clutch today. He looks like Giga Chad. Uh, Callum draws. Thank you for the ten bits. Everyone needs a hug after this one. Thornton six thousand. Thank you for the five hundred bits. I joined a, f a three five campaign around two weeks ago. It's my first time playing three five, and it's so much more detailed and interesting to try and learn compared to five e. I'm playing Isn't a Raptorin Warblade for my first Ooh. character. Raptorin. Wow. All right, there we go. Also, Gaijin, your new video was amazing. Yeah. Oh, love Yay. these Raptorins. Uh. And finally, from Callum Draws, we have 20 bits. Is Eastgan good at balancing things? I think he'd know how to use scales. Uh, A plus two. Da, da, da. Uh, that's all we got. Hey, who would you like to raid? <sighs> so I saw somebody suggest uh, Octopib because I guess he was having a he was having a day. So I don't know if Octo would be somebody you'd consider. Yeah, we can raid Octopimp. Let's do it. What should our raid message be? That is a good. Qu uh, uh, I don't know if I could say that one. <laughs> um, group hugs. Group hugs. Group hugs. Uh, All right, group hugs. Group, group hugs. hugs. Just to clarify, that's group followed by the word hugs, not hugs. group hugs, because pugs that look like Gru would be group a weird hugs. raid message. Group hugs with an H for group hugs. 